Welcome everybody to the Shut Your Mouth Lounge. This is episode number 82. Hey. And there's Addy. He actually didn't interrupt me this time. He just managed to get perfectly in when I wasn't talking. <laughs> I did I made a little delay. Yeah. I said it exactly I said it exactly the moment you said two, so <laughs> Well you missed. And I'm Alex, and there's also Pink here, if you would believe it. Hello there. And today we've got one topic, which is okay, because today I wanted to try and get down the timestamp thing. But, yeah, this one topic is a actually pretty simple one. We wanted to... There was some news this week that wasn't at all notable or, like, was just banking off of rumors. Like, did you guys see that stuff about apparently, like, a leak that the villain of the Black Widow movie is going to be Taskmaster? Yes. I'm happy to no, see Task. I'm I'm happy to see Tasky get more attention, and he's been getting a shit ton of attention lately. Yeah, the more Task Taskmaster, the more satisfied I am. I don't know why yeah, I love to see the Taskmaster. Why everyone goes to theaters? I mean, a Black Widow movie. I I feel like with Black Widow being the least developed of the Avengers by far, I think it makes sense to give her a movie, if only for <laughs> it to retroactively make her a better character in previous movies. <laughs> I suppose so. Which is weird to say, because she her series is very much over. Like, unless they make a full Black Widow trilogy, which would be weird. <laughs> but they made very a full Star Wars trilogy. Dead person. They made a full Star Wars trilogy about trilogy about Obi Wan after New Hope, so I guess it's possible to go ahead and do that. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, how much was there in Avengers that was just lost potential for Widow? You remember her red in her ledger comment that she had way back in the first Avengers that was never followed up on? Yeah. Ah. Uh, it would always reference the times where she was a, a Russian killer. You never actually touched on it, though. Uh, I, I guess they couldn't fit that in. They had to put Bruce Banner's dick in her first. <laughs> what the hell was wrong with Joss Whedon? The world may never know. Like, I, I remember the period after Avengers came out and people were still remembering Firefly and Buffy and people were like, Joss Whedon is a genius! <laughs> and then there was Age of Ultron and Justice League and people were like, Joss Whedon is not a genius! <laughs> My, how the tables had turned. Yeah! Ooh. You know what, though? I'll make a controversial choice. I know everyone and their mother right now likes to say, say that they should have just kept Snyder for Justice League. It would have been just as much of a trash fire under Justice Le under uh, Snyder. It would have been worse. I, don't, I wouldn't go that far. I will. Uh, this The Justice League... Did you watch Justice League? No. It's a half-loved, red-headed, stepchild, orphan abortion of a movie. <laughs> it's like if you combine the worst of Joss Whedon with the worst of Zack Snyder. Like, we got Zack Snyder's dark, grimdark edginess, and then we follow it up with Joss Whedon's weirdo humor. <laughs> and I like to imagine that all of it is happening in slow motion as well. A lot of that movie's in slow motion. For <laughs> Because you remember when Days of Futures Past had that cool slow-mo effect with Quicksilver that everyone loved? Yeah. Yeah, Justice League was like, what if we just did that for every scene Flash has? <laughs> the, well before Days of Future Past, though, Zack Snyder was always obsessed with the slow motion. Oh, I know. I, I'm aware of 300's existence. <laughs> and I watched... Watchmen too. Yeah, Watchmen, absolutely. Though Watchmen, I think, had good use of... Well, the thing is, the only slow-mo sequence I can remember from Watchmen, I'm sure that there are more masturbatory ones that I just can't remember off the top of my head. The only slow-mo sequence from Watchmen that I can think of is, like, the only good thing about Snyder's cut of Watchmen. <laughs> that, in that intro sequence. Everything else that's good about that movie just goes back to Alan Moore, you know? You're right. Everything that's good about the movie is the stuff that was not perverted. Oh my god, have you ever seen the uh, the Night Owl and uh, Silk Spectre sex scene from that movie? No, 
I have not. It but, is... but you described it in previous podcasts, so I do know what happens. Right, right. The fucking <laughs> Night Owl's plane has an orgasm, and <laughs> I don't know why Dan reaching climax causes his ship to reach climax. I didn't know he was that close with it. <laughs> It's been many years since that ship has gotten any love. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you know, we did have a topic. Yeah, we did. What was the topic? The topic is also about another Trash Fire comic book movie. Oh, joy! So apparently Dark Phoenix is already being pulled from theaters. <laughs> what a way to go. Yeah. I... Oh, this just leads right... I'm just going to go ahead and mark down a timestamp here because this is technically when we're ta uh, talking, uh, starting this conversation. Let me go ahead and... Oh, God, I've got college documents all over the place. Hang on, I've got to file through those. <laughs> i got to dig through that shit. Hang on. Oh, God. Okay. Uh -huh. Six minutes and 20 seconds. That's when the discussion of X-Men starts. Boom. All right, so how about this for a, a painful death of the Fox Men universe, huh? Yeah. Like, it's they went the, on for as long as they could, and then they just sputtered out. I mean, it could have gone longer. This is the kind of franchise where it's been dying a slow death like this for forever, and people just let it be. Yeah. Like, it, it, when this franchise fails, it just goes back and re reinvents itself. We've already known that for a while. And eventually, <laughs> eventually it goes back to the same old flaws. Definitely, every time. Yeah. Done it multiple times over, over the course of, what, 20 years? Yeah. Oh, man. It, it's sad to say that for... I would say... How many movies are there in the Foxman franchise? Uh, that's a good question. There are the three of the main trilogy, the first trilogy, then you've got two Wolverine spinoffs, I want to say. Three. Three. Uh, uh, my, math, my math says 12 if you count Deadpool. All right. So, yeah, out of that 12, I would say... Uh, oh, I forgot about Logan. Yeah. That's yeah. the one I was forgetting. I was like, what do you mean third Wolverine movie? They're, they're, I, I'm thinking real hard, but I can't think of anything. I would say out of those 12 movies, only six were good. And a, a one-to-one -one batting ratio ain't great. <laughs> no. Especially not for movies. Because look, what's Marvel's batting ratio? How many? <laughs> there are 22 Marvel movies. How many of them are bad? Like two. Uh, let's let's <laughs> go ahead and say both of the Thor one, Thor two, Iron Man three. Would we count Iron Man two? Yeah, let's count Iron Man two for the sake of our sanity. Right. Age of Ultron. Yeah, I only count five. Yeah. Which 22 for? <laughs> That's, uh, what's 22 minus 5? 17. 17 for 5 is a much better batting record. <laughs> There's better math there, but I'm not a math man. Yeah. We should probably do actual ratios, but fuck that. <laughs> we're, we're not professionals. Addy, do you number? No. Okay. I I have a paper that I, that I am incapable of numbering, genuinely, so... <laughs> <laughs> ah man the only reason I even had to take maths in school is because I uh, didn't have a professional thing from the uh, from the like whatchamacallit the state people so like I still had a professional op opinion saying that I couldn't number it's just they, they weren't the ones who, who said so so they would have needed to um, check me as well and I, it wasn't worried because they take a year to send out the results, and it, I was on my last year anyway, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think 
I think the the Foxman ratio would actually be even worse for you because I like I like Logan. You did not, right? I despised Logan for the most part. Okay, so it's all right. We're up to five, five for seven for you. Uh, let's see, Days of Futures Past. I would say the ones that I enjoyed of the Foxman were Days of Future Past, uh, First Class, uh, both Deadpool's. If you want to count those. And for the most part, I would say that's it. Maybe X2. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long while. I give but... X2 and the Wolverine uh, a bit more credit. I quite like right. the Wolverine. With I did too. With that said, the Silver Samurai was kind of dumb. Very. Uh, you can't ever have an accurate comic book character. You gotta try and put your spin on it. <laughs> Stupid giant silver mech. Uh huh. All right. And now let me ask you a question. You <laughs> Keeping in mind that neither of us have watched Dark uh, Dark Phoenix, which would you say is the worst? X Men Origins or uh, f- fuck? What was the third one? X3. Apocalypse. Apocalypse. I, I I'd say Apocalypse was the worst out of all of them. Okay, that's worrying because I I watched X Men Origins and X Three when I was a kid, and even as a kid, I thought those movies were trash fires. <laughs> I only remember freaking Mystique and being bored about those movies. Uh huh. Well, you remember Mystique because she was naked. That's pretty distinctive. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, because they they had to put in the fan service somehow. Apparently. So Mystique's naked now. Why Mystique? I, she, admittedly, she is the most logical person to be naked all the time because that that does make sense regarding her power. So I'll, I'll cut them some slack there. What do you mean you don't want to see saggy magneto balls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It depends if they want to go for if they want to get dudes and lesbian chicks. Then absolutely Mystique. But you know they could have got fucking they could have got straight chicks and gay guys all over it with Wolverine. <laughs> hey, you j- hey you! How about you be naked, Wolverine, the entire time? Why? Cause cause fuck you! Cause we want to make money. That's why. <laughs> oh, he was naked in one of the movies, wasn't he? Yes, he I was. Think, I think he was. Yeah. I think he was naked in several movies, or at least for some scenes. Yeah. The one I remember, the one part I remember Wolverine being naked is the one where he breaks out of the facility. Yeah, That's Apocalypse, the Wolverine, maybe a bit in Logan as well. Not Logan, the uh, the Wolverine. He was in Apocalypse for a scene. Why? Because I have no idea. You would have to ask Fox. It's not a Wolverine movie. <laughs> they put him in there anyway. They're all Wolverine movies, aren't they? Yeah. Even that pool. <laughs> oh my god, Wait. we're going to have to talk more about Deadpool later, because I did watch it this week, and I actually it is not only relevant to what we're talking about now, but I've got something to say about it relevant to the fall of the Foxman universe. The... Perfect. I personally, I, I, I would say X, uh, I would say Origins Wolverine for me is the worst. Did you watch Origins Wolverine, Pink? I did. That, that movie just had nothing going for it. No. I, I think I'd have to agree. It, it was pretty terrible, but I would still put it above Apocalypse because it's not three hours of absolute nothingness. Well, it basically is, but it's only two hours. Well, I heard the mansion explosion scene was good. What man? Oh, in in the other one, I would disagree. I recall absolutely nothing I enjoyed about Apocalypse. Huh? Not even Wolverine, your favorite character. Or how about Dark Phoenix? Cause she's not been done enough. <laughs> Dark Phoenix has never ever in any adaptation been adapted correctly. Fucking Dark Phoenix and Evil Raven. Those are the two for me. Those two storylines, I'm sick of them. 
every storyline, Jean Grey and Raven have to go evil. <laughs> like if someone... There's something about the comic book adaptations that gets lost in translation, where it simply becomes this woman with a lot of power is just simply too powerful, so obviously they'd have to turn evil, right? <laughs> That's how power works, right? Yeah. Well, that, that is how if... movie makers always look at things, because fucking Superman, right? A every person right. outside of comics who tries to take a look at Superman is like, well, clearly this guy's evil. <laughs> right. It, it, it's a weird effect, but there are sometimes there are characters that are blatantly overpowered that they don't have a problem with. Fucking Wolverine's invincible. You can't kill Wolverine. <laughs> like, they had to cheat to kill him. They had to pull some real bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. You know what just occurred to me? Deadpool 2 occurring in the same universe that the Wolverine and Logan does doesn't make sense. No, it does not. Because a vital, it was a vital plot point of Deadpool too. At several scenes, like, oh, Wade's regeneration has been turned off. That's a big problem. But as soon as the regeneration comes back on, it's no longer a problem. Whereas Logan and Wolverine are heavily built upon the idea of Wolverine had his regeneration turned off for a little bit. Now he's fucked. Do you even remember that part of the Wolverine? Yeah, a little bit, I think. I forgot that I always forget they put Madame Viper in that movie, without <laughs> without Hydra. Oh, was she Red Skull's daughter in the comics? No, that was Sin, wasn't it? Yes, that was Sin. Fucking comic book Nazis! They're too they're too easily confusable. <laughs> And, like, Madame Viper, is she, like, supposed to be an Asian Nazi? <laughs> no idea. Uh, I think she was in there to connect it to Logan in X-23, but they never actually tied that thread together. Weren't Logan and v Madame Viper married at one point? I feel like they're Maybe? I, feel I know it... Wolverine was married to somebody evil at one point. Probably several somebody's evil at one point. Well, I mean, it, keep in mind, wasn't there a count that Logan's actually killed eight of his own kids by now? Probably. <laughs> what the hell is Logan's life? <laughs> it's misery. Like, the, the world is out to get the poor fucker. <laughs> I actually kind of like that Sabretooth went out of his way to adopt and raise one of Wolverine's own kids... For the deliberate purpose of getting Wolverine to kill the kid one day. Just to fuck with him. Because <laughs> Sabretooth just rolls that way. It's just what he does. I miss that version of Sabretooth. <laughs> I miss Sabretooth being a relevant character altogether. Oh man, talking about X-Men makes me miss so many classic villains and heroes. Oh, we got more to talk about that later. Okay. Addy, have you watched any of the Foxman movies? I watched Deadpool, and I want to say like the first three X-Men movies, but the I watched the first three X-Men movies so long ago that I don't remember any of it. <laughs> you know what I remember? I remember Naked, naked Mystique sliding under a door on her... Which is weird, because she's naked, so she was sliding on her bare ass cheeks. <laughs> and she was sliding under and flipping off uh, Stryker. Right. I remember Jean Don't... being killed in a flood. Wait, how is she so slippery? That... You're not naturally slippery when you're naked, are you? <laughs> Sexual juices, Pink. Sexual juices. <laughs> <laughs> Mystique, Mystique had to lube up before she went. Yeah. <laughs> I'm imagining the fucking scene from Simpsons where the Scot where the Scot the Scotsman goes into the kitchen. And he's like, Lunch Lady Doris, do you have any grease? Yes. <laughs> then grease me up, woman. <laughs> Where Scott goes into the kitchen, yes, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you have oh, watched the first three X Men movies, Addy. <laughs> oh, man. 
Oh, it's just the worst. Oh, God. Whew. It feels good to expel the Foxmen from our systems. So very much. We can always look back on the fond memories of Logan telling Charles and Magneto to fuck off. <laughs> good times they were, but I will not miss them. <laughs> Oh, you know what? You know what's another good memory? You remember that part of X-Men Origins where, like, Wolverine goes up to the Blob and says, calls him Bob, so the Blob gets angry that he called him fat and throws him through a wall, and then fucking... What's his fucking name? Uh, help me, Black Eyed Peas Man. Will I Am. Will I Am pops in and says, you shouldn't have called him Blob, and Logan says, I called him Bob, and the audience, you know, just plays a laugh track. <laughs> what the fuck was that movie? That it, that is one of my most hated movies of all time. X Men Origins Wolverine. I hate it. Okay, got hit with the boob boob. Like, <laughs> like there was something I at least liked a little bit about X Three. I can't remember it for the life of me. You know what? Kelsey Grammer is beast. That saves X Three. <laughs> but X Men Origins Wolverine doesn't have Kelsey Grammer, so fuck it. God. Uh, speak, speak of sh shitty, uh, tricking X Men properties. The anime, the Wolverine anime. <laughs> did not watch it. I did. I well, I watched parts my of it. Is shaking too much to actually write down right now. Yeah. I watched. I watched parts of it because, eh, it was something, <laughs> and. <laughs> I mean, most people say that it was good. I don't remember a lot of it, but I just remember disliking it. <laughs> uh, like, I, like I remember it was the weirdest shit because I think there were like three anime, three like. Uh, wait, wait, wait! Are you talking I mean, about Wolverine versus Hulk and Wolverine versus Thor? No. Or no, no, it's Hulk versus Wolverine and Hulk versus Thor. No. Wait, uh, no. Wolverine and the X Men. No, it's just, it's just called Wolverine. That's the name of the series. I have no memory of these events. It's set in Japan. He goes back to his Japanese waifu. And then... Uh, shit goes down. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, it was the weirdest because... Uh, I'm not sure if, if, they've, if the animes are all together or something. But... There, were like, there was like these three series... These like, three anime series that got shown at the same time. It was like one of them was about Wolverine. The other one was Iron Man, from what I remember. And the third one was weirdly enough, and I feel like I misremember it, but it was probably freaking Blade. <laughs> it was. Blade. It was. I. Yep. The Blade and Iron Man animes were definitely advertised over here in the states. The Wolverine anime, I have no recollection of. I remember watching. Was... I remember watching yeah. the Iron Man anime and. And it was really weird because the main, the final boss of the movie was Tony's Japanese girlfriend who was possessed by her grandpa's ghost, and she was naked for some reason. And my parents, <laughs> my parents were shocked that a kids movie, which of course back then we thought all superhero movies were kids movies, were shocked that a kids movie had a naked girl in it. They felt betrayed. Uh, <laughs> put up, put up a timestamp. Uh, I'll show you a picture of Wolverine of the anime. Why? So you'll know how he looks. <laughs> it's Wolverine. He's gonna look like fucking Wolverine. But he has this stylish red leather jacket. <laughs> what? So he's Dante? Oh my! There you go. He's a Yu-Gi-Oh. He's Dante. He, he's worse than Dante. He's Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. <laughs> he, no, he's worse than Yu-Gi-Oh. He's the fucking Yu-Gi-Oh GX guy. Does he have a bullet? Jaden. His You're talking about Jade and Yuki. His name yeah, was... Jade and Yuki. What? And he was family with Yuki? No, not the, the, the first guy is Yugi. Yugi Moto. The second, the GX guy is Jade and Yuki. That's stupid. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> huh. And yes, I'm, yes, I'm right. His name is Jade and Yuki. Probably not in, in the original dub, but still. <laughs> All right, I got a question. Anyway, Am I going crazy? Yeah. Why do I think that there's a Yu-Gi-Oh video game that is about the War of the Roses? 
About what? Am I going crazy? Why do I think that there was a Yu-Gi-Oh! video game about the War of the Roses? The War of the Roses. Which which one is the War of the Roses? Uh, the English Civil War in medieval times. When Richard when Richard uh... III had uh, the little kids assassinated. I don't recall there being like I don't doubt that there's a Yu-Gi-Oh game like that about that, but I I don't remember there being one. It was about the, the Lancasters and the Lancasters and the Yorks, and I think Yugi was supposed to be the I think they had Yugi replace fucking uh whoever was the house of, head of the House of York, and they had Sato Kaiba replace Richard the <laughs> Third. This yeah, sounds like an anime I'd watch. Yes, yes, there was a series about this. Yu-Gi-Oh! Du du Duelists, Duelists of the Roses. I had that game when I was a kid. It was the wildest shit. Because it was a turn-based strategy game, yes, but it was with Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. So it was it was Yugi Moto as Harry Tudor, later Harry VII of England, T. Gardner as Elizabeth of York, Tristan as Thomas Gray, my Valentine as Lady Margaret Bu Beaufort, Joy Wheeler as Christopher Earthwick, Shady as John Morton, Rio Bakura as Jack Cade, and Solomon Muto as... So I'm gonna assume John Solomon is probably Yugi's grandpa, as Jasper Tudor. And then Shadow was Christian Rosencrantz. And then they just added everybody else who was also a freaking villain in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, but they didn't replace people. <laughs> Wait, so none of them are Richard III? <laughs> No. Easily the most no, famous. No, no, no. He is. Slysheen. Someone named Slysheen is Richard III. Why? I don't know. Why not make it Sado? Sado's the big villain of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Richard III is by far the most famous individual from the War of the Roses. I don't I don't know. The only the only other named uh, named person, or you know, someone who to took the place of a real person was Pegasus, who who took the the place of Thomas Stanley, first Earl of Derby. Eh. I just want to say that there's the there's a character. I'm not sure if it's an actual Yu-Gi-Oh character. I doubt it. Uh, but <laughs> there's this character called Player Killer of Darkness. <laughs> Player Killer of Darkness. <laughs> Player Killer of Darkness. Ah, uh, that's an interesting name. There, I'd almost be interested to see a game that has an enemy that is called the Player Killer. <laughs> this, this guy's name is apparently short, shortened to Panic. But yeah, so going back to the to the to these animes, I I feel like I watched a lot of the Blade anime because I like I like Blade. I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> the Wolverine anime, I just remember disliking it, and I didn't even watch the the Iron Man anime. Because I mean, yeah, for me at least, the Iron Man anime was my first introduction to Iron Man, so it prepared me for the movies. Ah, you. Yeah, over here they showed it after the first movie has been out for a while. I mean, like, I think the second... Yeah? I mean, it set, it, it set me up on one thing. that I, I will say one thing that I think it did pretty well. There's only one... There's two scenes I remember from the Iron Man anime. One being naked ghost girlfriend. The other one being that him and the girlfriend bond over the fact that uh, Tony, they're both of their dads, hated them. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I think it was actually something like uh, Tony's dad always wanted a daughter who would be better at business, and the Japanese daughter wanted a son because sons are more honorable in Japan or some shit, you know. Yeah. But anyways, keep going. About what? <laughs> oh, you were, I thought you were going to keep talking about Blade. No, I, I don't remember anything about it, dude. Ah. I just told you. Yeah. All right. Uh, bl about Blade, he was in Spider-Man Friend or Four as an unlockable character. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, he was! There you go. Yeah, him and Iron Fist. Oh my god, yeah. I got something to say about Iron Fist too when we get to Game of Thrones. <laughs> Oddly enough. Alright, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and mark down a timestamp right now, because we are going to be transitioning to the part of the show where we talk about what's coming out on the channel this week. Alright. Addy, go ahead. Give and me a sec. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's loaded. All right, while you do that, Pink, what's coming out on your channel? I don't think I've got anything coming out on my channel. Sweet. I should record stuff today. Probably won't happen, though. Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking Shit's I should record loaded. stuff. And then I right. I, ha I have it up. <laughs> Woo. So... 
on Monday, people will be able to see Rainbow Six Siege Part 11. Woo! We recorded oh, a lot of that Oh, man. Stuff. Is that and a then, longest series, or is Terraria still out uh, longer? Uh, Terraria is still longer. Terraria ended in 14 episodes. 14 episodes. And also... And also, CJ's actual episode count is one minus because <laughs> right, we right. skipped episode nine. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, and then on Friday, people will be able to see Dead by Daylight, Kratos' Crow Kang connection. <laughs> that, yes. Oh, man. Yeah, he's got a big one. That, that series is not one I'm going to be able to actually watch. I don't know about you guys. That, that's a that's a video for the viewers right there, and I ain't going back. <laughs> that's a video for what? You cut out. <laughs> I said that's a video for the viewers, not for me. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Because we, we were... That might be the hardest we've ever yucked it up in a video. <laughs> Which was fun, but I don't think I'm going to be able to go back and watch myself do that. Have we ever yucked it up harder on a video than that? I don't I don't know. But I, I do know that I don't need to worry about shit like this because I'm just like, I'll do the cringy shit that I like for now and then I'll read it later. But that's 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 future Eddie's problem, not present Eddie's. Well, it's not it's not cringe, it's just I don't think it would be like I think the magic is lost behind the scenes. Ah uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't recall any other instance where we've done something quite like Dead by Daylight, so as of now, that is the first of its kind. Yeah. Harry Potter. I, well, that was something a bit different. We were playing characters rather than making up our own. Right. True. We knew what we were getting into with that. I think I think it's somewhat similar in the case of Sea of Thieves, but that one was mostly Addy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that that's your that's your videos, and I'll need to schedule freaking next month's videos. Even that I think we're missing something for that, but whatever, I'll I'll check that out. That's my issue. <laughs> I would say we that's should get problem. some recording done this week, but um, my dad is actually on vacation from work, so we are probably going to be just jamming out Game of Thrones for this week. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Ha. Ah, anyways. Addy, you got anything coming out on your channel? Nope. All right. <clears throat> well, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Well, what is it, Addy? It's a yes or no question. No, no, that's, you the, know name, what that's the name of the show. It's yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's by you Reddit subreddit where you where you can press the link and then it's a it's a. It's a clip that starts good, that goes really bad, and then goes really good, and then goes really bad again. <laughs> he decided 50-50 wasn't strong enough. Yeah. You need, you, you need it to be a 100% chance you're going to get some good and get some bad, but you need to get it both in equal measure. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do the rounds for... Let me go ahead and mark down a timestamp for this. All right. Uh, Pink, what you been up to this past week, man? All right, this week, let me try and think. I know there must have been something I did. <laughs> I finally okay. started watching Good Place at your recommendation. Okay, how far are you in? I've only made it two episodes in thus far. I really wanted to see more before podcast, but I had other things I needed to do. It's but right good... off the bat, that I'm show's... really enjoying it. Yeah, that show starts off on the right foot. Yeah. And it only keeps finding better and better footing. <laughs> like, oh boy, I I'm excited to see how you are for season two. Because season two is like entirely different in concept. It That show moves, man. <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. All right, so what's the chief things that you really thought about the first two episodes of Good Place? Uh, I think the cast is fantastic. I've never really taken much notice of what's her name, Kristen Bell. Yeah, yeah. She to me, she's always been that one 
squeaky person that will often guest star in shows that I've seen, but never really built up any opinion of her. See, but uh, I think she handles this show phenomenally. I'm, and uh, I've always ahead. been inclined to like her, but I should note that I'm that I love her husband, Dax Shepard. So, right. Which Dax Shepard, I should note, does guest star later in the series. Nice. <laughs> Anyone else here love Dax Shepard? I think I've only seen him in Employee of the Month. I've not seen Employee I... of the Month. Is it a good movie? I freaking love that movie. You might not. I don't know. Huh. All right. Uh, what's it? About? I forget. What's that movie about? I feel like I have heard of it at some point. It is. What's it about? It's about this one dude who's kind of a bum working in a retail job. And basically, a new person is hired who is really beautiful and he basically wants to get with her. But uh, there's this. I'll say it's basically a rumor that the chick is only interested in guys who are basically the employee of the month. So now he's competing with Dax Shepard to become the employee of the month. All right, that does sound like an interesting concept. Ordinarily, I'm not big on the kind of movie that's all about, dude, I just want to get laid. Yeah. With that said, I just made a big gasping noise because while we're doing this, I'm trying to run through Dead Rising 1 on PS4 and get all the trophies, and I just saw the greatest thing ever. (laughs) (laughs) I... I fucking suplexed a zombie into the wall, and the zombie then merged into the wall and rode it all the way down before eventually falling off of it. <laughs> and I need, I need to show you guys that clip. I'll, I'll upload it to YouTube later. See that on my... There we go. That's what I'll, what's on my channel for this week. A fucking gliding yeah. zombie. Yeah! Quality! 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 <laughs> okay, but... So, who's the main character? Who's the main actor in Employee of the Month? Because you're, the movie you're describing is... rings a bell, but I'm... Dane Cook, I want to say. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that that name rings a bell, but the I'm not seeing a face in my brain. Right. I'm pretty sure he's a dude that everybody hates. I don't know. I've definitely never heard good things about him. But, oh, is there anything else that's distinctive about the movie? Because I, I, I almost can see the poster in my brain, but I'm imagining Seth Rogen. <laughs> it, sounds like a, it does sound like a Seth Rogen movie, conceptually. It does. There's not much else I can really think that stands out about the movie to me. I thought you said you loved it. I... I do, but I don't think there are any descriptors that would possibly cue any revelations here. It's... Hmm. I don't know. Huh. All right. I guess we'll move on. Yeah. <clears throat> so the... So yeah, that ca- that cast is actually pretty good. My family did really did not like Ted Danson going in, I should know. Partially because, you know, my parents were around during the era where Cheers was considered the best thing on TV, and they firmly disagreed. <laughs> so, like, and my family is the kind of indivi- kind of people that if you're on a show they didn't like, then that means you're in bad territory for them. Right. So they didn't like someone on Cheers, so they didn't like Cheers, so therefore Ted Danson sucks. <laughs> I don't exactly agree with the logic, but, you know. But good place to very much turn them around on Ted Danson. And Ted Danson's pretty great in good place, isn't he? Yes. I I don't think there's any actor on that show that really stands out as a bad actor. They've all been phenomenal thus far. I mean, J- Jamila's kind of like I I it, it's the weird case where I don't want to call her bad because it feels like she's intentionally playing the character to be a uh, sin. I, I I don't. I can't put a good word for it in my brains. But you've seen the character. You understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
it, it seems like she was genuinely intended by the writers and the actress to behave in a certain manner. Right. Ah, but yeah, that is a great cast, <laughs> including uh, oh, what's Jamil's soul, Jamila's soulmate? How have I forgotten his name? Well, I, I forgot. I know why I've forgotten his name, but I can't tell you because it's actually big spoiler. But <laughs> oh, Jong Yu, Jong Yu, right? Yeah, uh. Jong 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 Yu is also very good casting for a reason you haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. Has, is there the moment between Ted Danson and the dog? Was that? Am I misremembering things, or was that in season two? I'm um, episode two. That was episode two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a that's a funky moment that just hits you out of nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> I think that was a moment where I was like, "Yes, this is a five star series." <laughs> that was the dumbest shit possible. And, like, I've never seen a star more stark overreaction by a character. <laughs> I'm just going to put this in perspective cause, for Addy, because Addy's probably not going to watch this, because Addy has some kind of bizarre opposition to TV. I guess it killed his family. But there's a moment in this show where Ted Danson's character, who is an angel, believes that his sector of heaven that he's working has been tainted by a dog who is not supposed to be there. So you know what the character, Ted Danson's angel character, does, Addy? Obliterates it. He does it more than that. He punts the dog into the sun. And you watch, the, do method. You watch the dog fly into the sun. The super method. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, even know why it's become a meme for Superman to throw people to the sun. He's never done it. Because he could. Because he could. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. If you had super strength, would you throw people you don't like at the sun? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice trip in space, asshole. Oh, man. Uh, that, that's why people keep making super, Superman evil. Because they're like, well, if I were Superman... And then he... <laughs> that's exactly the problem! That's the exact fucking problem! Yep. If I were Superman, I'd just fucking kill everybody I don't like. Like, yeah, that's why you aren't Superman, Jack. Well, that's not why you aren't Superman, but that's why we try not to <laughs> make Superman be like you, jackass. <laughs> Does anyone really want to watch that TV series? Superman it, is not your power fantasy. Like, who would want to watch that? A fucking TV series of Superman being a school shooter, right? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get revenge on all the people that are mean to me. No, no, you should probably move on, pal. I'm just saying, it's probably healthy. <laughs> Instead of fantasizing about blowing him up with your heat vision. The, th the thing is, I feel I feel like if I were Superman, I'd just freaking rob places and then obliterate the cops. <laughs> Why? What need would you have for money? You're Superman. My point, exactly. <laughs> I, like, I, I wouldn't even use the powers aside from freaking robbing shit, robbing electronics <laughs> to enhance my normal life. Addy, if you were Superman, you'd just fuck off to the moon. I know you. <laughs> you'd just be like, later, bitches, and just fly off. <laughs> later, nerds, I'm out. Uh, there's something amusing about the idea of Superman growing up and finding his powers. And rather than the be like, I must use this power for good, instead he's just like, all right, I'm out of here, just flies off. And <laughs> nobody ever sees him again. <laughs> That's good, I hated all of you anyways. <laughs> it's, it's why Dr. Manhattan's a better portrayal of evil Superman than any portrayal of evil Superman so far. He's not really evil, it's just that he's sick of people, so he's like, oh, I'm going to the moon, fuck you guys. <laughs> Oh, man. I think Watchmen generally defines the, yeah, we did this the way it should be done, and everyone else that tried it afterwards failed, so they shouldn't have even tried. Yep. Uh, uh, comic book edge, huh? What were we talking about? Right, pink, okay. 
Let's get back to the good place. I hope you haven't already forgotten. <laughs> but the... Okay. What would you... Is there anything you've particularly got to say about the series? Uh, nothing that I haven't already said, I don't think. Hmm. Alright, you don't have any thoughts about what's going on in the plot or anything? Not yet. All right. I think we'll hear more from you in the coming weeks, because, yeah, you'll have something to say. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? That came out as kind of gibberish. You didn't do anything else? <laughs> I don't think I did anything else out of the usual. So I'm good to pass the sharing stick. <laughs> yeah, it's a stick. We have to send it back to Hungary now. <laughs> All right, Hungary. What'd you do? So, I finished Spider-Man PS4 for the second time. <laughs> this time, I 100 percent did it. Alright. So, yeah, 100 percent of that game's kind of a pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah. I'd imagine you did it with some degree more balance than I did, though. Eh, I don't think so. I just... I think I st well basically what I did was get um all of the the bags and the the photo locations while going through the story and then once I got to the point where where you're not yet <laughs> so I don't want to spoil it but basically I reached a point where Sinister Six exists and I was like okay I guess it's time to get everything else so I spent two days just Going, going to Taskmaster, beating his face in, uh, <laughs> doing all the Harry missions, freaking just getting gifted multiple suits by Black Cat, and uh, what else did I do? You, oh, right. You Topic make it all the sound crime. like she's trying to buy Peter's love. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another spider suit, please fuck me. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's possible. Spider Man's like, what am I, your, your hooker? Am I your suit whore? Is that it? Yeah. Uh. Do you think you can buy my love with spider suits? If you think but, that, you're correct. But, but look at this one. It, it, has, a, it has a nice fr frilly uh, st stitching. And also, I, I cut out the ass part so you can shit while swinging. <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, that'd be the worst. Could you imagine Spider-Man just swings over your head and you just see shit land on the car in front of you? <laughs> shit lands on you? I was I was hoping Spider-Man would at least have the courtesy to aim for the cars. Uh, at that point, he just becomes a freaking pigeon. <laughs> if if Spider-Man did that, I'd believe J. Jonah Jameson that he's a menace. <laughs> Everything was true. He is a menace. That'd be an interesting. That'd be an interesting headline on the Daily Bugle. That's for sure. Spider Man <laughs> shits on people. Yeah. Uh so, uh, that the small bevel arms that you pick up with the bags are nice. I like most of them. Some of them are just there to be there. <laughs> I felt. Oh yeah. Well, the thing is, a lot of it exists to provide the backstory for the world. Because the thing is, it's part of the thing of starting a Spider-Man series already, like, five years into Spider-Man being Spider-Man. Yeah. You kind of uh, have the, to be like, yeah. alright, so here's explaining how long we've been fighting Electro, or Shocker, or what have you. The part I dislike is that they have they have the classic suit, they have, like, five... They, well, I don't have five versions of the classic suit because then I might be satisfied with the with the selection of classic suits. But basically, what I was going to lead that is that they have the like classic uh, comic suit and it doesn't have the freaking webbing under the armpits. That and I dislike is that. a definite annoyance. I mean, and the worst part is that and the worst part is that the webbing is a is a pickup from a bag, but you can't put it on. You know what they need to do? They need to make it where you can get it with any of the suits, and it needs to be an upgrade. What? They, yeah. Okay, here's what they need to do. They need to add it as an option, like a suit upgrade, 
that allows Spider-Man to glide. Like a yeah, wing, I was a, like a wingsuit. Yeah. I was about to yeah. say that, like they they have the Iron Spider suit, the original one, not the shitty freaking movie one. Well, the, the original Spider Iron like Spider is not, not much better. I like the movie Iron Spider suit way better than the co- when the comic Iron Spider suit. <laughs> I I did, I disliked it much more than the comic one. It actually is blue and red. Eh. It's a combination of your favorite and least favorite colors. I I just don't like how it looks like how it's just freaking metallic Lego, Lego blocks making out a freaking vampire. It looks like garbage to me. But <laughs> the yeah. red and gold is so much worse. Eh. Oh man, I thought it's we just... had a universal agreement to never praise the comic Iron Spider suit. <laughs> <laughs> The contract has been broken. Addy has forsaken his soul. Freaking. <laughs> Mementos is, is currently take, taking over the world as we speak. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So they have that. And that, that, that had already that built an ability to glide. So they could make it a thing where you can either choose to have the have the webbing on the arms to glide or switch on that suit. Yeah. That that could like that could be an interesting application of that of, of either of those shitty suits. <laughs> I mean, but, with some, yeah. of the, some of the suits you just gotta got question of, like, why not just make it like an upgrade option? Yeah, I like you, how it gives you a good yeah. motivation to buy suits, even if you don't like the suit design. Don't get me wrong. It's just some of the stuff is like. Like, oh, oh, damn it, I can't think of any, but there's plenty of superpowers that seem, like, perfectly reasonable to just make it a random generic upgrade. You you mean half of half of the ones where, like, there's the there's the Iron Spider Mark IV, that is, you deflect bullets, and then, the, then there's also the, uh, which one was it? I forget. Whatever, there's other, like, armor Spider-Man suit, and it's, it's just, you deflect all bullets. Because the, the Mark IV Iron Spider can deflect sniper bullets. That one can. Why have both? Yeah. Or like, there's four different abilities, where or four different suits, where the abilities is just Spider-Man hits harder. Ha! Huh. Including the one I'm using. <laughs> so, you know. But do they change the moves he hits harder with? No. No, the, like, the, the, the difference is... Uh, one of them makes makes it so his arms get like shock shock waves around his hands. The other one makes it so his arms get get like electric or something to show that that he's more powerful. And then the the one that I I you I used just makes him red, like glow red <laughs> for some reason. Red means he's, stronger. He, he's not. He's over. He's over by the Satsuki no Hado and. <laughs> That's how. That's why he's stronger. Yeah, we could have got that Mar- if Marvel fought four existed or something. I don't know. Oh, uh, Marvel versus Capcom set makes me sad. But yeah, uh, the game. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one hundred percent person completion thing. It's a joke costume, and it's not even a good joke costume in, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, cause like, what are, you wanna know what you get for one percenting the game, W? Uh what? You get the, you get the costume that gives you heaven or hell mode for one. That's the ability. Uh, Interesting. And for two, and for two, it's just Spider-Man in his mask and underwear. Ah, underwear Spider-Man. Yeah, there's a lot of people yeah. that would consider that a good 100% completion goal. I don't. What are they just? Gonna, I would have. Uh, what are they gonna do, Addy? Just give you another weird suit design? Consider I mean... if the Iron Spider was the 100% completion goal. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm assuming you want something cool as the 100% instead of something funny, right? Well, it's not not cool. Well, not necessarily something cool, but you know, like, say. There are so many classic Spider-Man designs. Use one. <laughs> Some people don't like, like the classic Spider-Man designs. Tough shit. They bought Spider-Man. 
Okay. How many people fervently dislike yellow and blue Wolverine? I'm pretty sure Pink hates yellow and blue Wolverine. I do not like the Astonishing Wolverine. Which I think is crazy, but whatever. I don't talk to yellow and brown fans. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I think making the hardest, mo difficult uh, costume to unlock the joke costume and a distinctive one at that makes sense. Because... Yeah. Honestly, I'd rather have people be forced to run around with the serious costumes if they're going to record my game. So make it so <laughs> that only people who are really good get to unlock the stupid costumes. Except for Incredible Bagman. Can't forget Incredible Bagman, can we? But like, you know, you know what what a costume I think would have fit for the one hundred percent completion one. What? The Universe Spider-Man costume because he's a god anyway, so. It makes sense. We did pitch that one last time, but upon further thought, that costume is actually quite hideous. No, it looks like <laughs> shit, but it, at least it makes sense. Yeah. But, like, how many people would know that? The Unipower is such an odd thing that, like, is only comic book nerds. Like, and it's not, it's not just, all, it's not just MCU, uh, not MCU, it's not just Marvel Cosmic, which is inherently uh, obscure by itself. It's old Marvel Cosmic. <laughs> you know, you you know what what would have been the tr the true one hundred percent completion what? costume? Freaking, I forget its name. Bloody hell, uh, anti venom. I I was about to say spider carnage. <laughs> that was a spider <laughs> carnage. No, there wasn't. But Web of Shadows had a costume for one, anyways. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, the game. It's still alright. <laughs> I'd say I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. <laughs> like, the what, game, are you the game hero? Yes. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I am game hero, actually. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, the, th like, the thing is, the game was really good, but then I went back and did all of the missions, and I'm like, well, you see, side content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the side content was just like, hey, go and freaking clean Harry's underwear because it's freaking better the environment or something. And then, <laughs> then, then the score just went down and down. <laughs> and it's it's still a bad game. It's just not the, the best side content. <laughs> yeah, the the pigeon catching missions and the small ca cloud catching missions are all a little uh, awkward. Just wait until you have to follow the drones on their exact freaking route. Oh yeah, that's that's gotta be great. Yeah, like I, I wished when I started the game, I I hoped that all of the side missions would be like black cats, where they st they they st they tell a small sub story. There's you can see the you know the connection and all. There's sort of a sort of a freaking dialogue and all that, and then at the end of it, there's this there's the reveal, and I mean the reveal isn't the best, but you know it it, it makes sense in in the universe in my opinion. Huh. And most of, most of the side missions, aside from Tax Pastor, were just okay. So get all of these, and then you will get points. I should note that when you say Taskmaster. I hear Taxmaster. <laughs> Which is funny because Soon made the exact same mispronunciation during the Square Conference at E3. <laughs> so he's just the mas master of taxes now. Yeah. The, t the state of Texas. He's yeah, the master perfect. of the state of Texas. He's the Texas master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So aside from that, I also played Samurai Shodan 2019. Uh, you said how you were able to do this, but I don't remember how. Japanese demo. Right, Japanese demo. The, the, the Japanese demo that for some reason has uh, fully subtitled and translated venues. Because there are, <laughs> because there are English speakers living in Japan. Ah. 
It's a pretty easy feature to include. They include Japanese dialogue in the uh, American release, uh, don't they? I don't know. I would assume they do, because every other game does. And, like, I know but, that there's weebs over here who think it's better to listen to the Japanese dialogue, but I'd imagine there's just plenty of Japanese speakers in America. And England. I mean, we fight. And uh, it's been Jamaica and wherever else they speak English. I mean, with fighting games, I, a lot of times I just prefer the Japanese voices because those are the ones I'm used to. Because, <laughs> you know, before before there, there were options for multiple voice lines, it was Japanese or nothing, so... <laughs> I think it's excuses and you're just a weeb. Yeah. <laughs> you but... like freaking half-shaped half -shaped people, so <laughs> your opinion is invalid. Anyway, several I showed at 2019. What did you call me? A half-shaved person? I'm not half-shaved. No, I said, no, I, I said that you you like you like pe people who, who shaved. You like uh, the half-shaved hairstyle. All right. What do you mean by the half-shaved hairstyle? The Skrillex hair. Well, Skr no, Skrillex. See, he's got it long on top. I don't like that. If you got it short on top and even shorter on the sides, though, that's good. I think it looks hideous either way. <laughs> Like, hips, the hipster length is as long as it can go. When you picture the stereotypical hipster with the beard, that is as long as it can go, is, in my mind. I don't actually mind the hipster look, for the most part. Just that I find their behavior obnoxious. And I, I have yeah. a strong feeling both yeah. of you are going to disagree with me on that, aren't you? I don't care what people look like. <laughs> I find everything about people obnoxious, so... <laughs> Uh, Pink, I guarantee you there are looks that you despise. Probably. But yeah, the uh, the gameplay of Samurai Showdown, it's... Uh, it's good. <laughs> like, the, the fighting is fun and all that. It's just the game, like, the, the actual walking speed is too, <laughs> too slow for me. For my taste. <laughs> I didn't mention like, it, but I actually did put in a little time with Samurai Showdown 2 while I was on Game Pass. And yeah, that game's got slow walk speeds. Not, not the ones I like, which is the same freaking 5 special, but... <laughs> yeah, like, they, they went really you know, heavy on the being inspired by 2. And I'm not the biggest fan of 2, because it's, it's like, it's... From what I can gather, people are split on either liking 2 or 5 special. And I fall into the second category, so. Yeah, two seemed more my speed, but with that said, I didn't put much more time into two, because I, you know, don't have anyone to play it with. And the game didn't yeah. have a practice mode, which pissed me off. I know the game's, uh, yeah. not, I know the game's old, but I've said before, one of my favorite things about fighting games is spending time in the lab, so. Yeah, uh, 2019 has a practice mode. That's how I actually remembered how to play Ukiyo because they only have three people in the in the demo and it's freaking Charlotte, Genjiro, and, and Ukiyo, so <laughs> I had to choose. Yeah. They they actually like they don't have Kazuki yet, but he's gonna get added, added in, in December. So right, that's good. something. Good yeah. old DLC. Yeah, I mean, hey, at least it's free. I saw that they're adding uh, one of the DLCs is, is, I'm going to assume it's the little, isn't it the little sister of uh, Bird Girl? I don't freaking know, dude. I, I ignore the rules as much as I can. We own the DLC. Yeah, it, it's, it's Nemo Ruru. I don't, I don't know, I don't know that relation, but I know that, I know that they are Rurus. <laughs> Funny sentence. It has to be Nakaru's daughter, doesn't it? Daughter, yeah. Daughter, what? Whatever, fuck it. It's ancient times, and somehow Nakaru's still alive in the modern day. So go figure. Nakaru never dies. She she's a plague everywhere, <laughs> any time. She's slowly sucking the life out of her opponents to gain immortality. <laughs> Nakaru 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 is slowly sucking the life out out of every fighting game that houses her. I give her a hard time, despite the fact I've never actually played as her in any of the games. She might actually be a good character. 
Because there's been plenty of characters I judge from a distance, and I actually played them, and I'm like, oh god, I actually like this character. <laughs> like, I played that could yeah. Because I've had that with Ma I had that with uh, May in King of Fighters, and I've also had that with uh, Lucky Chloe in Tekken. With who? With who in Tekken? Lucky Chloe. Ah. Uh. I played Nakururu, but that that was before the big skip of me, so I don't actually remember how she plays. <laughs> I just remember disliking her when I did play her. But yeah. I mean, there is uh, a certain degree an element of, like, even if you like how a character plays, you're just going to just still dislike their character itself, and you can never get past that. Yeah. Like, Pink, do you remember how many pros there were, how many people there were with Injustice 2 that were like, I want to main Robin because he has the best moveset, but I can't because Damian Wayne is the fucking worst. Yep. Like, I, there are several people, including Maximilian Dude, who Addy keeps an eye on, who all were vocally like, yeah, Robin's moveset is great, and then they get, like, through five of his uh, match intros, and he's just terrible. <laughs> You are a terrible, small little human being, and I am done with you. He's not even small. <laughs> he was once upon a time. I, mean, I suppose we all were. <laughs> I was about to say. It's no longer an excuse he gets to apply for. So yeah, pink, bad news. Nicotine what? is still dead. What? Nicotine is still dead. Isn't it? No! Good? Isn't the death of nicotine good news? No, because nicotine is Pink's main <laughs> from Samurai Shodown 2. Pink main cigarettes? There's a, <laughs> you, didn't see, you didn't see coffee nicotine in Samurai Shodown 2. Fuck no, I didn't. There's an old guy who who is in coffee nicotine. He, just, he does freaking magic. <laughs> that that was Pink's main. Okay. For a, for a brief, brief time in Samurai Shodown 2. <laughs> Rest in peace, you crazy old man. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, well, once again, like, to summarize, Samurai Shodan 2019. Good game, the fighting is whatever, because, like, it, that's also a bit too slow, but then, what, then whatever it takes, like, it tries to go more more after two. The freaking movement speed is killing me whenever I play it. <laughs> Have you tried dashing? Yes, not much better. Huh, but... Hang on, is there a thing now of fighting games killing off the oldest character on the roster every time? Because now Street, Fi Street Fighter killed off Ganon 5. I don't know if you noticed that. Akuma killed him. Yeah, I know. And didn't Tekken finally kill what's-his-face? Heihachi? Uh, not Heihachi. Well, yes, they did kill Heihachi, but... Oh, uh, the old man with cancer. Freaking who the hell had cancer? You mean, you mean Jinpachi's the friend? <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, uh, the ma- uh, he trained somebody. He was somebody. Shaoyu. I'm he sorry. trained Shaoyu. He was Shaoyu's master, right, right, right. Like, he's dead now, isn't he? Well, he, he died in five. <laughs> yeah, but they brought him back for six. And then they killed him again at the end of the game. Ah. Uh, Poor bastard. I mean Nicotine has been dead since the, since the second game, so that's like freaking 92. <laughs> I don't freaking know what it released. They brought him back for a dream match, though, didn't they? Yeah, in 6, he comes back as a playable character because even freaking the dog is playable separately from Galford, so... Yeah. I, I tried the game as the dog once. In, in, in one way, it was easier than playing with actual characters. In another, in another way, the dog, can, the dog literally only has one move, so... Well, three moves, so... A fighting game character with three moves. What is this, dive kick? Yeah. Dive dog. Dive dog? Dog kick. Dog kick? <laughs> dog kick sounds like he's my sweet, so I'm, I'm, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> uh, dog, dog, dog kick is the game where you, where you kick dogs into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, so there's that. Other than that, I also played the demos too. Persona 5 and Persona 3 dancing stuff. <laughs> I forget the whole name. 
Uh, Dancing in Starlight that... and Dancing in Moonlight, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that, Dancing with Moonlight. Dancing with... I don't want to know what that dance looks like. <laughs> it's a dance of death right there. Yeah. Uh, imagine if First Level 6 is a freaking main boss is the Moon Lord. <laughs> shut up. I mean, C Cthulhu actually might have a decent chance, but shut up. So, yeah. Just don't call him Moon Lord and we're good. Yeah. So, those games. Holy hell, how do people people play those games? I don't understand, but I don't need to. Like, the, like I played the songs on normal, and there was no time when I could even actually look at the animations or anything in the game because it, it was always press button. Well, and even then, I missed half of the buttons. Yeah. Like, Yakuza Zeroes was pretty nuts. Yeah, Yakuza Zeroes dancing video game was easy. <laughs> this shit! No, no, no! Okay, are we talking about disco or are we talking about karaoke? Uh, both? Because karaoke, karaoke was doable. It was just difficult. Disco was genuinely impossible. Disco was nothing compared to this. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? The Persona. No, no, I know. The, d yeah. the Disco mini game to me was just impossible. I couldn't fucking do it. It didn't. I looked up I a tried. guide. It to, be up. To, be to be fair, I looked up a guide on figuring out how Disco mini games mechanics work. But after I figured it out, it was actually doable. Well, it was doable, but then Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. That that's the whole story of the Disco mini game. <laughs> Even after I looked up a guide, I couldn't figure that shit out. It's just comboing button presses and timing shit. I, I, I never got it. Never, like, I put in the right buttons and everything in the right order. Yeah, but I, I think it also counts how many steps you take. So you need to take more steps until you get to the buttons you need to press in or something like that. That's stupid. It is. <laughs> I'm sure it's actually not, but I'm gonna say it's stupid now for the sake of comedy. So yeah. Persona. Uh so there's four types of button presses that you need you you have you have to do. There are single presses, double presses, uh uni unison presses and holds. So it's guitar hero. Kind of but Guitar Hero is not this much of a freaking train wreck <laughs> of a freaking of just buttons being everywhere, everywhere. It, cause I'm sure this game might, isn't a train yeah. wreck. It's just difficult. I it's don't... not a train wreck. It's not a train wreck. It's a train wreck of buttons being all over the pl place on the screen. <laughs> cause <laughs> an orgy of buttons is what I'd call it. Yeah. Cause it's like the the second you you press one button in. But at the start, it's it's easy. At the start of at the start of any song, it's like okay, you can get get on the freaking rhythm and all that. And then you reach the parts where the songs actually start playing, and there are four or five unison bars on the screen, as well as as well as three holds and five double presses. <laughs> and you need you need to you need to figure out which one which one to press, but also because of of the size of my TV, I can't see and the uh, and how close I am to it because of space issues. I can't I can't actually see all of the freaking input bars. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's an issue of I can only see how I one one half of the inputs that I need to put in, and all <laughs> so I just need to freaking just sway between the two halves constantly. And then also unison button presses, and then holes, and then also double button presses. But then sometimes they they feel like being a piece of shit and just put double button presses between unisons. While you also need to hold. <laughs> yeah, this sounds it's... like an extremely difficult Guitar Hero, but that's might what be what people who play rhythm games want. Dare I suggest? I mean, Eddie, I, I need to I, remind I... you that yeah. you're a weirdo for wanting games to just bend over and let you fuck them. <laughs> I feel like normal difficulty should be easier than this. 
Like this is something I considered for hard difficulty, but then then we move on to the other game that I played, Taiko no Tatsujin. I want to ask, like, how much experience do you have with rhythm games? How much experience? I played, uh... Well, Yakuza's rhythm games, I played uh, Guitar Hero and basically the rhythm mini games for, for, for the most part, because there's not a lot of rhythm, rhythm games that to my knowledge, uh, could utilize the controller before now, so... <laughs> yeah. So, a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. So, are we for sure that you are not playing the Dark Souls of Rhythm games? No. <laughs> I, I just... I just don't think that, that this would be the Dark Souls of Rhythm games. There is, there is this one... There is this one looming figure or every rhythm game, that I feel like they would be the Dark Souls of Rhythm Games. Their name is Hatsune Miku. Everybody loves Hatsune Miku. Uh, Hatsu Hatsune Miku. Yeah, Matsune Hiku, we know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Vink and I know especially. But, yeah. So, I, I don't remember, because I remember trying out the Hatsune Miku game. I don't remember my experience with it, so I need to give it another chance. Are you sure you have to? It sounds like you don't. You're having. It doesn't sound like you're having a good time with it. You cut out. I said, "Are you sure you have to?" It doesn't sound like you're having a very good time with it. It has to be cool. Yeah, I don't with, even with rhythm games in yeah. general, really. I like rhythm games. Really? <laughs> That's the weird part. Yeah, I like rhythm games. Huh. I mean, there's like, something I, I, for everyone. Yeah. I imagine there's someone out there who's like, I fucking love this rhythm game. You know what I want? I want to be harder. Yeah. Hurt me more, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but, uh, I, I, there's, yeah. I think the actual title for the normal difficulty of Doom 1 is Hurt Me More. No, it's Hurt Me Plenty. Oh, Hurt Me Plenty, right. Which... The first, I tried actually tried Doom 2 on the normal difficulty for the first time yesterday. Not that, actually that hard. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, so Taiko no Tatsujin. Have either of you heard of that? Uh, vaguely no. rings a bell, but no. So Taiko no Tatsujin is the biggest arcade game in Japan. Explain. It's... So Taiko... Are a type of drum. Taiko are these gigantic ass Japanese okay, drums. Okay, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm I'm picturing it right now in my brain. Yeah, so Taiko are these gigantic ass Japanese drums, and they're real big in traditional music. So what Nemco did like 50 years ago, I don't actually know the, the times, but yeah. So what Nemco did like 50 years ago, where they went, well, yes, Taiko, but also video game. So they made a, a video game, a rhythm game that that is that is controlled by taiko taiko drums. So there are just these arcade arcade machines with a screen and a drum, and you beat the drum to the rhythm, and the game tells you where to beat the drum, and that's how you get points. And then big monies, right? I don't know about the money. I don't think they give you money out of it, but yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, it made big money for them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It made big money for them. I mean, it is it is the most popular arcade game in Japan as far as I know. But ah. yeah, Taiko no, Taiko no Tatsujin uh, is Demko is just basically just Demko and so we've been doing this game for 40 years and we still haven't released a console version as far as I know. <laughs> they, might, they probably have in Japan. <laughs> but we, we still haven't released... What fucking yeah? American is going to play this Japanese drumming game? So <laughs> then they released it internationally. <laughs> Really? Yes, this is an international game. You can look on look, look, look the PS Store and write in Taiko no Tatsujin and it will give you the game. It's titled Taiko no Tatsujin Drum Sessions, but yeah. I tried that out and Taiko no Tatsujin, either from the... Well, it's just... Uh, from the... Well, basically, it shows how they... How I feel like they have more experience than say, uh, Atlas, after creating the native games, because their UI is easily understandable. 
Every, everything everything moves, but it is understandable. You have a control scheme that's not hard to figure out, and even then, they, there's like a good 15 minutes of them just going, so, we know that you don't have a drum controller, because why would you have a drum controller if you didn't buy the game with it? <laughs> so we know you don't have a drum controller, so you, pre you press this button for this side, that button for that side, the rest you'll figure out. <laughs> Nah, they actually have a really, really comprehensible tutorial that you can skip, but <laughs> yeah. So, that yeah, the controls. Uh, the basic controls is one half of the face buttons uh, are the inside of the drum, one ha the other half are the outside of the drum. And then there are times that you have to press both sides together for the button to hit the register. So it's just a thing, thing of, you know, thumb coordination. <laughs> and I tried out Daiko Tatsujin on uh, easy, normal, and extreme difficulties just to see the difference. Easy is whatever. I mean, it's, it's probably what I would play the game, game on right now just because I'm not that experienced with it. Yeah. But it, it still feel, feels like a relative challenge. Normal, I can see the game ramping up. Extreme, holy shit! It's a bullet hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which to be expected on extreme, and I actually like kind of like that. <laughs> I kind of wonder if like j between bullet hells and all and uh, rhythm games and all that, I wonder if like Japanese gamers in their dreams just see red orbs raining down from the skies. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh. The Tango Tatsujin is probably the best rhythm game out of, out of three, these three, in my opinion. It's got legacy. Just, yeah, it, it has it has enough experience to to be the best. Yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed it the most, and I'll probably buy it. Love the line. But yeah, so aside from that, Pink and I also played a game that's Tycoon. Oh God! And I assume you got horribly fucked. No! What? In fact, in fact, Hatsune Miku saved us multiple times. What? Yeah. I have never had a video game tycoon playthrough that went well. I think we're I think we're like 50, 15 or thirty mil in the in the in the green right now. Ha! Are you gonna do multiple parts? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are. Is it replacing Fallout? Uh, Ninety minutes. A couple days ago? Yeah, we recorded yeah. one and a half hours, actually, Pink, I think. Ah. That's 90 minutes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Counting is, in fact, for nerds, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say Pink. I was saying that we had recorded the 90 minutes a couple days ago, and everything was going very well. There yeah, were... Go ahead, sorry, sorry. Points where it seemed like we were about to die from debt. But then Matsun Haiku would bail us out. Matsun Haiku. That'd yeah, be a better game. We, we, because, you know, we did really one of the games that we were ripping off because, of course, so Hatsune Miku, Hatsune Miku became Matsuda Hiku. <laughs> uh, we have a game series because the, the company is called Notesda. And ah, the leader is called. Notesda? Yeah, and the leader is called Hot Towered. Hot Tower. You guys so are you know. idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then, uh, or or leading franchises right now are Matsune Hiku and Fall Off Boy. Fall Off Boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else's brain temporarily turn off when playing Fallout and want to call the Pip Boy the Fallout Boy? <laughs> it should be called the Fallout Boy. <laughs> How are they supposed to predict when they're making the original game in the '90s? How are they supposed to predict the rise of that band? Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> whenever, whenever you're in a fight and you pick, you you freaking no. Uh, whenever don't, you're in... don't don't. I will. I will. Whenever you're you're whenever you're in a fight. And you panic, and you you open up the paper. Each just play. They say the scene. It's a goddamn noise face. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. So we we made so many shit games. <laughs> so very many. Yeah. And they've all done good numbers. Eh, I mean, I think only one of them went, went below five overall, but yeah. Ha! We range from average to good somehow. So, we're doing something right. I put my heart yeah. and soul into those games, produce a bunch of mediocre products, one big hit, and then one, one bomb that sinks the company. <laughs> it's disturbingly realistic in that manner. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Game Dev Tycoon, fun. Watch the video when it comes out half a year day later. <laughs> Keep I don't know what else I should. Oh man. Uh, so, uh, other than that, I feel like I did something else. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I start up MGS Five again. Did they play you like a goddamn fiddle? No, I restarted the game because I was lost in the story. Because, huh. like, I, I, <laughs> I took a really long... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Freaking hell. I, <laughs> I took a little break between when I tried to play through the game for the first time and when I came back. Uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to restart the game. And then the freaking intro sequence. <laughs> And so I'm stuck in the, in the intro sequence still. Because <laughs> I started up the game and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll see where I last, last left off. And then it's just like, crawl around on your stomach. <laughs> and then I delete the game. <laughs> well, shit, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the endless cycle of MGS5 for now. <laughs> Don't you Hopefully know one going day... in about the intro? I do, but I always forget. It's not. It's just crawl for 30, sec 30 minutes. Do you not have 30 minutes worth of patience? A lot of times I don't have 30 minutes of time. <laughs> I, still, I, have, I still have Shemu 1 and 2 downloaded, but I haven't played it yet because I'm just like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, play it one of these days, and I never do. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, yeah, so I did that. I went back into Watch Dogs 2. It is still, in fact, Watch Dogs 2. Did you get the cops and then cause a big car crash by turning off the lights? No. Oh. <laughs> Why are you playing Watch Dogs 2 if you're not going to watch usually... dogs? You... Uh, I, I remember the Watch Dogs the freaking rip when the first one came out. First game came out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I usually when I play Watch Dogs 2, uh, when I get to an enemy compound, I just freaking call the cops on them. <laughs> Works out fine. Why not? Uh, but yeah, I've I've been trying to go go around and get all get research points and shit, and it's like I don't know why where I'm being stupid, but I am because it's because it's like. I go to a research point, it's in this suburban environment, there's just this one house with a freaking, like, there's just a row of house, of houses with gardens, and then I go into inspect mode, and I see that the thing I'm looking for is, like, six feet, six feet underground, and I am confused as hell. <laughs> underground? How? That's my, that, that's what I don't get either, because as far as I could see, because no, I no, went no, all, I was all over. I fun yeah. of you, actually. <laughs> I actually don't don't know where a freaking entrance point would might be. Look around. I did. I went all over the all over the block and the surrounding area. And unless unless it's freaking like hidden under a car or something, then I don't freaking see it. In order to watch dogs, you must check the area carefully. I did. I sp I checked the area for I think an hour. And it, there was just no entrance, as far as I could tell. Ah, uh, man. 
You still... <laughs> but did it make you more hype for Legion, though? No. Oh. If anything, it would be less hype for Legion. What, can you... How can you get less hype for Legion? You're, you're too scared that Legion will have basements. <laughs> uh. Uh, how are we supposed to expect this true secret enemy of Addy? The issue ain't even basements. The issue is basements that I, I'm supposed to climb into somehow, despite there being no vents and no accessible doors. <laughs> Well, that's a good. That's good base defense. Then they've succeeded. They have eluded you. Um. Anything else? Eh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going on a freaking job into you on one day. <laughs> All right. Exciting. Yeah. That's about it, I think. All right. <clears throat> you know, I definitely didn't mark down the timestamp for when you started talking. <laughs> so I'll mark down the timestamp for when I start talking. It's a hot one hour and thirty minute one minutes. It was an hour ago that Pink started talking about his week. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to go back a bit in the footage to find that. Timestamp there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I had a fairly busy week. So, first things first that I want to talk about, because it's kind of relevant to the whole Foxman thing. I watched Deadpool 2. And... Very nice. Yeah, that... I like the original Deadpool 1. Deadpool 1 definitely had some things going for it. Deadpool 1 definitely had some uh, bit boring aspects to it, too, for sure. Like, that we, that villain was one of the big cases of villain malaise in comic book movies, you know? Yep. Here's Ajax. He's an evil scientist, man. That's all we got. <laughs> uh, and then this does a much better job with its villain, because it kind of has multiple villains. Yep. Of several different varieties. You want All your, the varieties. You want your sympathetic villains, your villains that aren't actually villains, your villains that might be worse villains some other day, so they need to be dealt with now? We got all kinds of villains. Uh, and it's... The crazy thing I, I thought walking away from it was that was a better X-Men movie than any of the actual X-Men movies. Yes. And... I. I, I initially thought that while watching it as a joke, because there was so much focus on Colossus and this movie that there wasn't in the first movie. Though it felt like Negasonic actually got way less focus in this movie than she did in the first one. Yeah, I'd agree with that. All right, it, it, it felt like the extent of her gag was, hey, she's got Yukio, who is her complete opposite, but they're <laughs> dating somehow. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I'm a little sad about that. I did like Negasonic. But the focus on Colossus and the whole thing of the X-Men felt like a better X-Men movie. Fucking the villain, who I'll get to in a little bit, was better X-Men. The entirety of the talks about mutants were better than the X-Men movies actually handled it. Because at the end of the day, while it was frequently talked about in the movies that mutants were discriminated against, the focus wasn't on that. Mm -hmm. The focus was on either Wolverine and Cyclops fighting over Jean, or, oh no, Magneto is the evil mutants. But he might be justified because Hitler, but no, he's not justified. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he's coming quite close to being worse than Hitler. He may actually cause the end of the world. Whoops. It's like, ah, oh, oh, well, okay. I, I guess we weren't interested in having a really an interesting story to say, were we? <laughs> And then Deadpool 2 very much is much harder on the anti-mutant prejudice than X than any of the actual X-Men movies were. It's nuts. And I think it's really strongly in its favor, especially considering Deadpool 1 barely was connected to the X-Men universe at all. Right. And 
Josh Brolin, great as Cable. I hope that they're somehow able to keep him around as Cable into the MCU. <laughs> that would be hilarious for him to... Yeah, just as he stops being Thanos, he goes back to being Cable. That guy's got his job secured. <laughs> I dig it. He was a good Cable. Very. <laughs> the... Oh my god. Domino handled very well. Domino was a fun character, which I wasn't expecting that, because Domino's not a fun character in the comics. Right. She's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Like, the, that entire stretch where Deadpool's like, that's bullshit. You can't just have luck as a superpower. That's the dumbest. And I'm like, yeah! And then she actually has it as a power, and it's, oh no, it's the most OP power ever. <laughs> she can't die. Oh, man. I, she, has already, she, she has already colla collapsed the uh, freaking casino business. Yeah. Man, that's always a good question with this kind of character. Why not just go jam the, up the slot machines there? <laughs> Take a trip to Vegas. Come back owning Vegas. Yeah. Uh, the... I will say, there was one thing that I was always I was really hesitant about with Deadpool 2, and it's what happens to the X-Force. And going in, I was like, oh man, this is going to suck. They're going to bring in all these characters just to do that to them. Honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of fine with it. Like, now that I've yep. actually seen it. Because, I mean, the only real loss to be considered is, what, Shatterstar? Right. Like, I'm not happy to see Te Terry Crews go, but I recognize that Terry Crews wanted to just be there for the bit. <laughs> And, like, honestly, if there's any comic book character I'd be willing to lose, yeah, Shatterstar is pretty up there on the list. Right. He wasn't getting a solo film anytime soon, anyway. It's not the 90s anymore, so no. <laughs> it confuses me that he was popular in the 90s. At what point would a character that like design like that be considered good? <laughs> Only in the 90s. You remember when Alex Ross was, was told, we need you to design the most hideous fucking... Uh, the most hideous 90s design possible. So we just made Cable wearing Shatterstar's armor. <laughs> and that's how Magog was made? Yep. Uh, yeah, I I'm way more interested in the team that it actually sets up at the end of the film. Because that's actually a great team up. That's actually a great team lineup. Mm -hmm. like, even in the comics, that'd be a great team lineup. Cable, obviously, great character. By the way, one, one little thing I want to go ahead and mention. I did find it really funny how even though Cable thinks Deadpool's a jackass all, and all that, they're already kind of settle, setting up the friendship between him and Deadpool. Because did you notice, like, right. Deadpool starts uh, saying that the, peop the people running the Academy are pedophiles, and he doesn't have any evidence. He's just saying that because they're abusive towards kids. But despite him saying that without any evidence and Cable otherwise considering him an idiot... Cable completely agrees with them that they must be pedophiles, clearly. <laughs> the fucking part where the administrator runs away, and Cable just watches him go and goes, he even runs like a pervert. <laughs> uh, and, oh boy, Juggernaut. That, I forgot that, that was one of those beautiful moments where it's like, in, in my heart, I had forgotten that I was an X-Man fan. And my family had forgotten that they were <laughs> X-Men fans once upon a time, too. And then Juggernaut came out. And it's the one of the only times in, in watching any movie that my entire family has popped for a movie moment when Juggernaut comes out. <laughs> and while I am sad that we never got a I'm the Juggernaut bitch, I, I respect that they're not going to re rehash what X3 did. The <laughs> True. The only good moment of X3. <laughs> And instead, we get the also great... Yeah, you know, I'm gonna rip you in half now. I don't know why I find... That, that line, to me, was one of the funniest in the movie, just for how casual Juggernaut is about it. <laughs> just what he does. And then it lit, led into the, the dumbest and best gag in the movie, Baby Legs. <laughs> I've never felt more dumb laughing at anything than laughing at Baby Legs as hard as I did there. <laughs> Ah, uh, that 
such a good movie. Yep, I quite enjoyed it. Oh, and you know what really needs to be appreciated? <laughs> fucking, hmm. fucking killing the Baraka pool. <laughs> so, Addy, you know Baraka pool, right? No. So, they introduced Deadpool way back in X Men Origins Wolverine. But in the movie, they have him die, and his corpse gets reanimated as basically Baraka, but can teleport. It's the dumbest uh, thing. He's Baraka, legitimately. He's got swords coming out of his arms, and his mouth's all fucked up. He's Baraka. I see. And they call it Deadpool, and insist it's Deadpool. Because Deadpool wasn't edgy enough, I guess. <laughs> and in this, the finale of Deadpool 2, Wade gets a time machine... Uses it to go back in time and kill Baraka Pool in X Men Origins Wolverine. And, oh, and Hugh Jackman Wolverine just stands there and watches. Oh man, I also appreciate that they actually undid a death like a proper comic book movie. Should. Now you now you understand the plight of the comic book audience there. <laughs> that death at the start of the movie, completely meaningless. Fuck it. The death in the middle of the movie, also meaningless. The death at the end of the movie. It's the beauty of time travel, man. None of the deaths have any meaning anymore. Oh, yeah. Whew. Good-ass movie. Let's see, what else did I do? I decided to put a little bit of time into League of Legends because I'm just going around and doing the rounds and checking on all the uh, MOBAs because our scope is decidedly limited to just Dota. I mean, Dota. Yeah, yeah, we played Dota 2. Fucking brain. <laughs> our scope is decidedly quite limited to Smite, and that's it. And yeah, League's a different beast from Dota and Smite, that's for sure. One thing I noticed... Dota 2, your auto attacks are quite beefy. In Dota 2, it's actually perfectly reasonable that the game will start, and if you fuck up your laning, then the other guy could just beat you to death with his bare hands, and that's it. <laughs> Which builds a certain atmosphere of fear in, in uh, Dota 2 that is not present so much in Smite and League. To make up for... As if it's Hunters. Yeah. To make up for it, in Dota 2, there is your mana meter recharges very slowly and you get very little of it to begin with. So there's way less abilities shooting around. But the abilities do feel pretty meaningful. League's the complete opposite. Generally speaking, there are only a select few characters for whom you need to worry about their auto attacks. With that said, mana recharges very, very, very quickly. And abilities are shot out all the time. And some characters are very aggressive about it. And it's such a weirdly different beast. And Smite, I think, is kind of a comfortable medium between the two. Wouldn't you guys say that? Like, Smite abilities or auto attacks can be deadly, depending on who you're facing. Yeah. yeah. And for some characters, both are deadly. <laughs> yeah, Uller. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's an interesting and kind of different play field. With that, with that said, I'm playing through League's tutorial again, because it has a mandatory tutorial, of course. <clears throat> Boy, uh, League's, League's AI is different from Dota's. In both cases, I played against AI because fuck messing with either of those communities. They are cancerous. But <laughs> Dota's AI is, uh, well, they're not terrifically good at fighting, but you know what they're very good at? Forming her. Death Ball. Yep, Death Ball. Uh, you, with Dota, you have to stick to your teammates once you get past, like, level 5. Because at level 5, the entirety of the bots just form up into a ball of death. And good luck with that, because your team's bots do not have that skill and will spend their time jerking off in the jungle. League does, <laughs> League does not have that problem. In fact, not only is the AI incredibly incompetent, the AI, even in the late game, fails to really learn to push. So I'm in the late game in the fucking League tutorial as, I forget who, Drawman or somebody. And I'm sitting there with a hot 27 to 0 KD ratio and I'm like, you know what? These bots could probably use a raising in difficulty. <laughs> I'm... You know, why the, you know why the bots don't know how to push? Because they're noobs? Because they don't have our push. Our push. 
Okay, okay, we said the other day that there are no deliber deliberate push characters in Smite. We were wrong. All push is totally a lane pusher character. <laughs> His name is literally Push, obviously. <laughs> His name, if you pronounce it properly, it almost sounds like his name is just I push. <laughs> yeah. I push. That's what I do. I push. It's like I'll push as a Pokemon. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm imagining Zeus or Odin like, we need somebody to push the lane. And I'll push just dives in. I push. No. <laughs> no. Zeus goes, we need someone to push the lane. And then it, it's just the freaking the character select. Uh. Narrator guy going, ah, push. And then he gets lowered from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. And I'm imagining, there's there's an old SFM animation. I don't know if you guys ever saw it. Uh, Addy, you pay, probably paid more attention, a little bit more attention to this kind of thing. Did you ever see that animation of uh, uh, Kenny the Boat God from Walking Dead? Uh, No. Oh, there's an animation where it's playing, like, some Christian, like, uh, upbeat Christian music. And it just has Kenny descending from the heavens while Clementine prays to him. And, f uh, and fucking Lee is, like, rapid fire dabbing behind him. <laughs> it's the dumbest and the best. I loved it. Uh, I got a link. I didn't, I didn't see it, but you, you know, I, I actually saw a good idea recently. What? So a guy I follow on YouTube... Had his had his face scanned and then three D printed it for a for a mask. In interesting and horrifying. Best idea. Yeah, yes, I would. <laughs> I would definitely. I would definitely love doing that. I'd be on camera twenty four seven. Who? There's like all he, he even he, that we need to look into. He even painted it so people, uh, his screen name is Jezza, so like, people are calling him Handsome Jezza. Ha! <laughs> Cause like he painted it to, to look like him, exactly. Ha! <laughs> uh. God, that sounds awful. <laughs> I don't, I just, I just love the idea of getting your face printed and then or getting your face scanned and they're print, 3D printing it for, so you can wear your, fa your face as a mask while also not showing your face. Ha! <laughs> I, I love the concept. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say something. I had an idea. Anyways... So yeah, League League's a different beast. I'll say it's also quite different in aesthetic and the way it runs. Like it, hmm, it's definitely got a more of a World of Warcraft kind of old jank aesthetic going on than Dota and Smite, which are at least somewhat modern. You know? Yeah. Right. It's very cartoony too. It's weird, but eh, it, I still find it enjoyable. It's a different beast for sure. But I'm not picky about my MOBAs. I'm actually kind of happy with all of them. The issue, the issue being that MOBAs, like... If every fighting game had upwards of 100 characters, it's guaranteed you would find one character on the roster you liked. You know? Because, I mean, we, we've all had cases of a fighting game we didn't like, but we liked a character on the roster. I know that Pink... Now Addy's sitting on at least one here, and P Pink's probably got back nicotine. <laughs> Neither of us liked some rash or that too, I don't think. Yeah, but there's somebody off the roster you really liked, wasn't there? No. I mean, no, nobody that doesn't appear in the better form in 5. <laughs> right, but even playing Samurai Showdown 2, you liked playing your main, right? Eh. There's gotta be at least one g fighting game you don't like itself, but you like sp specifically playing as just the one guy. Let's oh god, see. I'm just describing every fighting game for you, aren't I? <laughs> no, actually, I think you're describing Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't get how Ermac could be your exclusive. Doesn't Kenshi do the same thing in a lot of the games? Oh, well, Kenshi not, is not nine, Kenshi so. is blue. Ke Kenshi is blue for one and for two. <laughs> oh, for, fuck's sake! <laughs> that's the that's, that's the that's the funny part. And I, like the thing is, I'm pulling this is blue shit out of my ass because I never even think about it. 
the, really the only reason I stick stuck with Urbeck is because he was he was here first. <laughs> like the the color blue <laughs> isn't as much of an issue as I make it out to be on camera. <laughs> Oh man, that's a good old problem of doing this, isn't it? It's so difficult to tell like where the illusion ends or not. Yeah. <laughs> am I genuinely an idiot or am I just playing it up for the camera? God, I wished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm totally not an actual idiot. I'm totally yucking it up. Yeah. In fact, all of us, all of us have PhD PhDs and freaking out of science. I was, I was about to say thugonomics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, PhDs in thugonomics. Us. Yeah, the three of us. Oh. Uh, okay. I'm untouchable, but I'm forcing, forcing you to feel me. You know, my, my, fa my favorite to see the song is the one where he, he, he says that he has three dicks and is a fiend or something like that. You know what? I'll choose to believe him. <laughs> I don't need I don't need proof. I'll go on the faith. My faith in Cena. See Cena's in a kidna. Cena is in a kidna. He has four dicks. <laughs> oh god. Can we stop talking about Cena having four dicks, please? I'm fine with go that. <laughs> Two differing reactions there. <laughs> Uh, okay. What was I going anyway. to talk about? Right, uh, brain. So yeah, League. League is good. All MOBAs are good, because when there's just that big of a roster, you're going to find someone you like on the roster. Whether you like weirdos or you like conventional guys, you're going to like somebody. <laughs> and there definitely are not as many weirdos in League as there are in Dota, but there are more weirdos than there are in Smite, so... Because, I mean, how many weirdos are there in Smite? There's Jormungandr... All of the stand switching people, Morrigan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think stand switchers are that weird. I don't know. I don't play a lot of mobiles. <laughs> <laughs> so. Morrigan's definitely a weirdo, though. Yeah, Morrigan is definitely a weirdo. Uh, and Pink, you got else? any examples of weirdos that you can think of? Uh. I don't know where the threshold for normal begins and ends. <laughs> I would consider the threshold for no normal the five starters. <laughs> it's, Soul's a mage, but she is very different from all the other mages, so she kind of falls into that category for me. Oh yeah, Soul is definitely a weirdo. Kronos, I suppose, just because he's actually a hunter, but he's a mage. Yeah, Al Kwong, Mage Assassin. Oh wow, oh, Jean... Al Kwong's super weird. Wasn't... Jean Key. Wasn't Hachiman <laughs> weird? Ha no, Hachiman is not weird. Hachiman is a pretty basic hunter. The only weird thing he has is that he has a he has this freaking flag. Right. And he's... Yeah, I've never played as Hachiman. I did. I I made him before Ruler, so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Hachiman's thing was he gets the katana short range thing, right? Yes. Right. He has a he has, he has Susan's combo. Ah, right, right. But yeah, a lot of those Mike characters are really conventional. And I mean, hmm. I guess I guess the weirdo is Kukulad, sort of. Kukulad, he doesn't, Kukulad he doesn't have... is a weirdo, yeah. Because he he has no mana. He has no mana. He has no freaking god off in West Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <He's not freaking laughs> Can we count? Should we count uh, Nuwa as a weirdo? Because just having minions doesn't seem like it'd be weird, but her ult is so funky. Her but, ult but... is pretty funky, but all of her other abilities seem to go well with each other. So I don't know. Well, the mission yeah, is pretty I... funky too. Yeah, but but if you if you count her ult, then I feel like you have to also count anybody else who has who can fly. So Tor, Taratos. Uh, freaking Chernobyl. Well, <laughs> then you get into the thing of, like, those guys are huge weirdos in any other MOBA, but flyers are actually a pretty common thing in Smite. 
Right. So it gets into the uh, becomes a different argument. Are like, are we going to conserve? Yeah. Are the people who can't fly the weirdos? Yeah, and I mean that that that's going to even vary further with like, Dota doesn't have skill shots. Like that's a wild thing about Dota. That those just don't exist. They're a league and smite thing. Which you guys know what I'm talking about with skill shots, right? Yeah. Do do we count Ratatosk girls a flyer if he just summons a tree? I I count Ratatosk as a flyer. I do. <laughs> it, it's fu it's functionally identical, you know. Okay, you want to know what of your though? Sylvanas. Sylvanas is a fucking Gu weirdo. Guardian Hunter. <laughs> Amazon Cub's a weirdo. Yeah, now that we're talking about it, yeah. Spike's actually got a lot of weirdos. Uh, anyone who's like, I'm going to build a fucking fort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kumba Karna, Guardian Assassin. Uh, well, I mean, the thing is, a lot of Guardians can be built as, built as assassins. Yeah. Geb! Geb! The best assassin! No, do you, do you, do you want to know who's, who the best assassin is? Big Kappa? Big Kappa. <laughs> Turtle Cause, cause that is, Yeah, because that boy is the, be is the best in every class in that game. Because <laughs> that, that boy is the best healer. He, he has healing abilities locked behind the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta throw those pennies at your console. Yeah, you need you need to you need, you need to insert a quarter into into your Xbox so it's <laughs> you event put slot. Put it in the disk drive. No, in the event slot. You insert it through the event slot, and then it <laughs> registers, and you heal all of your teammates. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining like pro league smite players have to just like constantly have fucking jamming coins in there. <laughs> They've got a stack of quarters next to their keyboard. Hey, you don't know that they could play on on control. Yeah, they definitely play on keyboard. <laughs> oh man, I suppose I should move on to something else I've played. And what else did I play? Oh, fuck. Uh, yes, I did play the I've played Dead Rising HD remake. Or not HD remake. God, I'd love for there to be an HD remake, but no, it's just a remaster. On PS4, and as a matter of fact, I'm playing it right now. Though I'm taking it pretty casually. And yeah, this is still the best Dead Rising. This was, like, I don't... Have either of you guys played Dead Rising? The first Dead Rising? No. I've not played the first one. I do own the second one. How much time I have, have you put played... in the second one? Uh, not very much time, I don't think. I know for a fact that I've never actually completed the story. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I played, <laughs> I played Case Zero, and then I didn't like the controls, so I don't, so I uninstalled. <laughs> Case Zero is pretty good. I would say Case Zero is the best part of Dead, Dead Rising Two. It, it's kind of a Ground Zero's case where they should have just left it in as the prologue. Eh, whatever. The mm. so. Dead Rising is like the one of those series where I have a very, very, very controversial hot take on it. Which, by the way, I found out the other day, hot take does not mean controversial. It just means new. Ah. So, all the times I've said con hot take to mean I've got something controversial to say, I'm actually super wrong. So here, here's a hot pot. Here's a hot pot. Yeah, yeah it's the take part that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh the the uh what was I going to say right so yeah I just accidentally walked into a boss fight so I'm going to be doing that for a little bit so now I'm going to be occupied <laughs> yeah oh god so Dead Rising 1's got some serious flaws I just need to go ahead and preface it with that first and foremost I'm sure you guys have heard about the infamously bad survivor AI like Dead Rising yes. 1 is the king of bad escort missions like, the AI in Dead Rising 1 is the absolute fucking worst. Like, genuinely, it's... Like, they walk head-on into crowds of zombies wanting to die. <laughs> They're just like, kill me, please. I... Give me the release of death. Death, I bet, tastes delicious. I want some. 
<laughs> and they take some. And... Huh, but... It's definitely better than the other Dead Risings in other aspects. Chiefly, Dead Rising's the only... Dead Rising 1 is the only Dead Rising that took itself seriously. In some manner. Like, Dead Rising 2 tried some idea of a serious story, but it kind of all goes out the window as soon as you run into the antagonist. Which, De uh, D Pink, do you remember the antagonist of Dead Rising 2? I do not. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> but he's basically evil pimp man. Uh, what was his name? TK? He, he hosts... It sounds right. He hosts the show that uh, Chuck is a participant in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely TK. But he... Yeah, he was a... Very much a villain that just shows up and he's like, Oh! Oh yeah! I'm TK! Money! And that's it. Character. Done. <laughs> Which is a pretty solidly lame villain, I gotta say. The Dead Rising 1 has a lot more serious of a plot. With that said, it's kind of a dated plot in an odd sense. Dead Rising 1 is very much a product of its time. It is a game that just oozes war on terror. <laughs> with that said, I think if it came out again now, people wouldn't have a problem with that, because people now are just as cynical of the government as they were then. But Dead Rising 1 is very much like, oh, the government's evil. Just super evil. Gigantic dicks. They have a somewhat sympathetic motivation for it, which is better than Dead Rising 3, which is just mwahaha, evil government bucks and all that, but... <laughs> yeah, the the story is uh, a product of that, and it, it, there's also a thing of it's very, very, very blatantly based off the movie Dawn of the Dead, without actually being a Dawn of the Dead adaptation, and that can be a bit of a problem sometimes. Particularly Dawn of Dead, Dawn of the Dead. You guys. At least have heard of that of the original Dawn of the Dead, right? Yeah. The classic zombie movie. Well, Dawn of the Dead is famously about basically consumerism. The zombies are basically big symbolisms for the American people just eating up whatever garbage gets fed to them and constantly just eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. And yeah, Dead Rising 1 very much follows up on that, though it being Japanese, it has a more distinctly Jap Japanese aspect of. Americans don't really respect nature or the way things should be, and instead try to force things to be the way they want them to be, and all that. And it has actual serious themes. And Pink, I think you've put in enough time with Dead Rising 2 to know that Dead Rising 2 does not. <laughs> Dead Rising 2, well, the, the story can be summarized as, oh, TK, big money, oh, money, oh, evil, money, evil. And the gameplay can be summarized as, oh, Man, I can wear a fucking man thong and uh, ride a little children's bike and also carry a lawnmower and that I beat people to death with. And that's the game. <laughs> and Dead Rising 1 has some wacky aspects. I'm not going to pull some bullshit and act like Dead Rising 1 was much better in that aspect. I will say it was better in that aspect, but Dead Rising 1 had some stupid shit. The... <clears throat> Part of my whole thing is... Not only that it took itself more seriously for a lot of the boss fights and the main plot and all that, but here's a here's the real controversial part. Because all that stuff I said previously, there'd be people that line up with me on that. Other than, of course, the people who think that Dead Rising 2 should just stick to being a dumb comedy game. But Dead Rising 1 has the infamous timers, which I'm sure you guys have heard of. I actually have not. What is that? I have. Every mission in Dead Rising 1 operates on a very, very strict timer system. Every mission is a timed mission. All of them. That doesn't sound good. Even though it's a free roam world, in order to get to every side mission, you have a time limit before you can do it. I mean, not, not before you can do it. Before, before it just ends. Before it's just assumed right. that the side mission ends because the characters died. <laughs> 
a lot it's a of zombie Super Mario. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Te- technically, you actually can't lose. If you if the time up ends up on the main mission, then it will give you the selection like load previous save, quit, or return to game. And you can just keep the game going well after you've lost the main quest line, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> but all, all mi- main missions, all side missions were missable content. And on your first run, it was guaranteed fucking teed that you were going to miss a big chunk of content. <laughs> At the time, this was thought of as the game's greatest flaw, without a doubt. With me looking back, from a game design perspective, it really adds a lot of tension to the world. And a real weight to your decisions. You have to think about things before you do them. You can't just be like, alright, I'm going to go do all the missions. I'm just going to get them all done. Yeah. Then I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Then I'm going to strip naked and fight zombies with Kung Fu. Because that's, that's, <laughs> that's what Dead Rising 2 and Dead Rising 3 are. And I really don't care for it. And I mean, I think there's something that can be said. I think it might be better if they tried to do that again now. Because now Persona is huge in the West. And Addy, how much missable content is there in Persona? Oh boy. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> All of the fucking side content is missable. 90, 95% of the game is missable. Yeah. And I think people will be more com- more comfortable with that. I think it gives a certain air to the game that most other zombie games don't. Because, I mean, the thing about zombies is in video games is that for, at first we were rolling with the idea of them being horror. And then past a certain point they just became a power fantasy, you know? I want to just fucking murder tons of zombies with my bare hands like a badass. And Resident Evil emphasized the horror by making the zombies absurdly tough and take a shit ton of bullets while you don't have many bullets to spare. Dead Rising was a, was a good bit less horror because, well, Frank is a fairly powerful guy and he can dress himself and the zombies up in wacky costumes. Yet it still manages to bring up the kind of feeling of a zombie apocalypse by simply making it so that He has to make serious choices or else people die. And that's something that most games don't actually go for. Your choices don't have weight that can bring serious consequences. Your choices tend to simply be, you know, all right, what upgrade am I buying? (laughs) I can do this mission (laughs) and I can either upgrade my jump speed or my fucking run speed or my attack speed, whatever. Right? Like here, it's, oh, if... I went for this mission because I thought I could do it quickly. I could not do it quickly enough. So three people are dead now. And they're just gone. <laughs> and for a- for Addy, I want to go ahead and note, I am aware that there are some people like Addy who are like, well, fuck them. Right? You cut out, so I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I, was, I was saying, I, I'm aware there are some people like you who, like, the prospect of in-game NPCs getting harmed doesn't really deter you. You're like, just fuck them. Yeah. They're not real people, so I don't need to care. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I, I still feel really bad for video game characters when they die by my actions. I still feel responsible. I, I, feel, bad, I, feel, I feel bad for a video game character dying if they actually had a character. <laughs> oh, all the Dead Rising survivors have character. That's one, th- that's one other thing that Dead Rising 2 really screwed up. Most of the survivors are jokes. Like the very first survivors, okay. The very first survivors you rescue in Dead Rising Two, Dead Rising One, are two middle are a middle aged couple that are lost on the rooftop and can't find each other. And when you bring the two back together, they have a little heartwarming reunion where they hug and say they love each other and they missed each other and all that. You know who the first two survivors are that you rescue in Dead Rising Two. Yeah. A black couple with a large, loud mammy stereotype who spends all of her time screaming at her husband. Ah. Uh. Dead Rising 2 is just one big fucking joke outside of certain stretches of the main story. I hate it. Ugh. Ah, it just makes. But me yeah, sad. like I, it just makes. Like me e- sad. E- e- even then, sometimes I I don't care because like I, I don't know what it is, but I only feel for a couple, for a select a few characters <laughs> sometimes. Well, I know I've heard you talk about your Persona playthroughs. Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, it doesn't matter how many scenes they give Ryuji. You're always going to be just like, fuck him. They give who? 
I said it doesn't matter how many cutscenes they give Ryuji or on, you're always gonna be like, fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, but in Dead Rising, <laughs> survivors very much matter, because, first of all, Dead Rising has a leveling system. And getting the level, <laughs> getting all the Sorry. levels unlocks not only a shit ton of moves, but upgrades your stats as well. And the best way to build experience is rescuing people. Other thing, at the end of, the, at the end of every playthrough, it gives you a grand big score number. And the, bigger, the more people you rescue, the bigger your score number. So... If you are just like, fuck them, then yeah, say goodbye to your, store, your score. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling here about a game that I love, particularly because this is the kind of thing... This is the kind of thing I feel like if Mike were here, we'd, me and him would just spend an hour talking about this game. Because you guys weren't there for the original podcast. There are long stretches where me and, Ad, me and Mike were just like, oh, we both love this game. Let's talk about it for a fucking century. <laughs> and everybody else in the podcast just kind of has to sit there <laughs> sit there and deal with it and I'm trying to avoid that so I'll just go ahead and wrap it up with one thing Dead Rising does re represent an interesting game design philosophy to me and it was one of the first major like games that were of the Xbox 360 generation where realism was more important than gameplay like I would say that's a general theme of the Xbox 360 generation when you guys say that I'm uh, inclined to agree. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think I. I don't think Mass I Effect. know enough of. Yeah. I never played Mass Effect, dude. <laughs> and neither did I. But I, from what I've heard, there's not much to play. Uh, uh. It depends on which one. Mass Effect One is a shitty shooter RPG. Mass Effect Two is an okay third-person RPG. Mass Effect Three is actually a pretty good third-person RPG, but it is entirely forgotten the fact that it's an RPG at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant to command my uh, survivors to move to a certain point, and instead I screwed up the input and just sent them to go... Uh, I just threw my ca carton of orange juice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but there are certain aspects of Dead Rising 1 that even though a large stretch of it does try to be realistic in the sense that it was common at the time, it still doesn't feel like it's letting the gameplay suffer for it. There's still some video gaminess to this video game. God forbid, I know. <laughs> The, oh, what was I going to say? But yeah, Frank's got a full on move set and all that stuff, and ah, there was a specific principle that I'm completely forgetting. Other than there's stuff like in a modern free roam game, stuff is entirely randomized, right? By and large, right. spawning locations. Dead Rising One doesn't do that. Everything spawns in a certain location, so you know what you're dealing with in a given situation. Which is important, because this game, you want to go for a perfect run and save as many people as you can. And the issue with free roam games and random difficulty is that getting perfect runs is pretty much entirely impossible. For fairly obvious reasons, because you can't actually predict anything that's going to happen. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm going to always appreciate that. With all that said, yeah, I should go ahead and move on past Dead Rising 1, because that's kind of masturbation, and it? The least I could do for masturbation is to have someone here to masturbate with me, which I don't. So, <laughs> are, are we gonna do lip biscuits on camera? Sure. Fuck it. No. So, ah, <laughs> uh, okay. One last topic. No, two last topics. Right. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm dragging this out, boys. I'm dragging this one out, and it's really bad because it's my mom's <laughs> birthday too. You're never leaving. <laughs> It's really bad because it's my mom's birthday, too, so I need to get, get the away. fuck yeah. out of here to join in on the celebrations. Ah. Uh, so, I've been watching through Game of Thrones, too. Also, season five. Uh, yeah, this is the generally the season that's agreed to be when the show starts to really decline. Yeah, I see. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So, Game of Thrones season five. Let's see. What happens? Uh... Well, for one thing, Sansa, the character who was introduced way back in Season 1 as being 13, important information, introduces being 13, and it's assumed that there's only been, I don't know, three years since then by the time of Season 5? So she's probably 16, right? Yeah, right. rape scene. Big ol' rape scene. Kay. Oh, man. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Edge it up there, D&D. Go ahead. Because here's the thing. This is where they ran out of books. Uh-oh. So what did they think was the next big thing? How would they Uh-oh. succeed without books? Uh-oh. Big, big rape, apparently. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right. Well, what and then, did... Jo- and then John jo- Snow goes and stops the big rape. Yeah. Well, John, yeah, John Snow definitely gets more heroic as soon as Gurum is done there. It's it's worse than it's even worse than that. Season five was also the season where Gurum stopped being there in person to advise the stuff. Uh oh. Uh huh. So, <laughs> There's a whole lot of uh-ohs going on here. Yeah, it, God has left this universe. <laughs> Why have you forsaken us, Gurum? The <clears throat> there was something else it did to really piss me off, and now I'm, now I'm angry that I'm forgetting it because now it makes me look like a gigantic hack. <laughs> <laughs> the characters definitely decline in writing quality. Tyrion ceases to be smart. Tyrion just kind of is along for the ride now, as Jorah and Varys drag him around to God knows where. Oh, my boy! Jorah's character can now just be limited to, God, I love Daenerys, she's great, and that's it. <laughs> Which is a bit of an oversimplification. Most of the characters have been oversimplified, really. There were several characters whose main strength was their intelligence. And while Gurum was pretty good at writing smart, witty characters, D&D aren't. So characters, not only Tyrion, but also Elena Tyrell and Cersei, have suddenly become a lot more stupid. And it's really sad in uh, Elena Tyrell's case, because she was the badass grandma. Oh, man. The, the, there's only, and the wild thing is, looking at the arcs that are going on in the story right now, we got, alright, Stannis is visiting with the Night's Watch, so we're going to have one of the kings actually appreciate how much of a threat the Night, the White Walkers are. Oh, no, wait, never mind, Stannis just wants to fuck off and uh, go fight Ramsay. Okay. What was the point of having him come north, then? Because, you see, in the books... Stannis goes north, because he's the only king that admits that the White Walkers are a threat. But D&D famously hated Stannis as a character. So when they get to the point in the books, where Stannis gets off the boat and gets to the north, well, that's where the books stopped. So, as soon as they take over, Stannis is like, Nah, I decided I was coming up to the north for fucking no reason. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and pick a fight with Ramsay and... back on that boat. Yeah. I'm gonna go pick a fight with <laughs> Ramsey and die now. K okay, bye. <laughs> and then there's the storyline of Sansa goes off to get raped by Ramsey while Theon watches the poor bastard. We got the storyline of Arya is just sitting in a temple and getting the shit smacked out of her with a stick because she can't learn how to be a ninja. Which, can anyone else agree with me here that the worst part of any given story is the part where they ha- where a character has to learn to be a ninja? Cause yes. Every time, it's the worst. Because it's the same shit every time. It's like Mr. Miyagi, if Mr. Miyagi had no heart, you know? Because every, <laughs> every time, it's, all right, I want to be a big ninja, but I'm also really concerned about my personality and things. And then the master whips the shit out of them like, no, forget about you. Just be karate. <laughs> and that's how it's going with Arya every time Arya's like so I want to learn karate so I can kill the people who killed my family and then the master's like no do not do that just be karate just be ninja <laughs> not, no no, nothing else just ninja <laughs> and it's like then why would she ever want to be a ninja if she doesn't want to kill people Like, is the point of being a ninja just to be a ninja? Do ninjas exist for ninja's sake? (laughs) Kind kind of, yes. They just exist to become new trainers. I mean, technically, they they just existed to be spies, so... Yeah. I mean, that's real life. This is fantasy we're talking about. True. And then we zip on over to Daenerys' storyline. And she's sitting in uh, former slave cities, and the slavers are like, Oh, man, this sucks that I can't have slaves anymore. 
so I'm gonna put on a mask and I'm gonna go stab people. And that's how that's how he became freaking Red Hood. <laughs> okay, let me tell you, it's the actual worst because you know what it is. Fucking, they're established as being a threat supposedly because they shank a couple of Daenerys's troops, right? And yeah. we don't care because they're generic troops. Who cares? And then. And then the character who is established as being, like, the top badass in the entire nation. Barristan Selmy. Barristan fucking Selmy. The big badass who decided yeah. he was going to go join Daenerys. Get shanked in a back alley by three rich fops wearing masks. Nice. <laughs> the, the, the Caesar method. Uh-huh. And it's worse than that. He saw them coming and he had his sword out. <laughs> Nice. What a climax. It's... It's one of the biggest cases... And it's worse that it's not just rich people. It's rich slavers. The <laughs> kinds of people who would have never lifted a finger in their entire fucking life. They don't know how to use weapons. <laughs> like, the kinds of people who look at a knife and they're like, Ew, poor people. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, God. It's so... Oh, it's just the worst. Because the that character is built up as the big, being the biggest badass. That's the only fight scene he gets in the entire series. The one where he gets shanked in a back alley by some fucking rich hobos. Wearing... <laughs> and only that, they're wearing heavy golden masks. With very, very thin eye slits. They shouldn't be able to fucking see. <laughs> that Okay, Barristan Selmy's death was definitely the moment that the series went off the rails that I can think of. And Sansa getting raped by Ramsay was what settled it. And there are parts that are still good. By all means. Like, the entire storyline of the Faith Militant with Cersei, that's actually pretty good. The idea of the common people of Westeros being sick of the of the nobility's shit and being like, you guys are sitting up there and having crazy homosexual incest orgies and killing each other. What is happening? Like, that, that makes sense as a storyline. They're kind of ham-fisting the homophobic edge to it, but, I mean, it's like, uh, it, it's one of the cases where you can tell this is the point in the plot where D and D wanted to start railroading it towards the ending, and there were just certain characters that had to go because they weren't a part of the ending. Barristan Selmy wasn't part of the ending; had to go. And there's several characters here, like Loris Tyrell, who is the sister of the king's of uh, Joffrey and Tommen's wife, had to go. And his character is gay, so they introduce the Faith Militant, who's wildly homophobic. So it's like, alright, there we go. Pfft, done. And I gotta say, Loris Tyrell, played by Finn Jones. Pink, you know Finn Jones. That is Iron Fist. That is Iron Fist. This or was, is, rather. This is the role that got him cast as Iron Fist, as a matter of fact. And the same can be said for Colleen. Colleen also is in Game of Thrones, and she also plays one of the worst characters in the show. Amazingly enough, they were like, Alright, how do we hype up our new Marvel show? By getting the two worst characters off Game of Thrones. Great! <laughs> Loras, Loras would actually be a really fun character if he wasn't played by Finn. His whole thing is, like, he's another one of the top badasses in the country. He is the legendary Flower Knight that every girl in the country wants... Because he's, you know, he's young and he's handsome, but he's a badass and he's a knight in shining armor. <laughs> and also in season two, closeted gay. Whoops. There's actually several great scenes for Sansa of her trying to get, get some with Loris. And Loris is just like, no. <laughs> with that said, Finn Jones has always been a terrible actor. I don't know what they were thinking for Iron Fist. Because he doesn't, I don't think he's ever met a gay person in his life. Because every scene that Loris is in, if he has to share it with a woman, the look on his face, he's like, every scene, he's like, ew, cooties, in reaction to every woman <laughs> he sees. And I'm not kidding. His face pinches up like he's having a hard shit. 
in reaction to seeing Cersei or Marjorie or Sansa. And it's like, <laughs> Finn Jones, have you ever met an actual gay man? Because I don't think their fin faces pinch up like they're having a hard shit when they see a woman. <laughs> how can you prove it? <laughs> I, how can you... How can you how can you how can you prove that gay people don't have an allergic reaction to women? Because I have a gay <laughs> uncle who's very close friends with my mom. <laughs> Fuck you. He, he, he takes daily medicine to try to get an allergic reaction. <laughs> <laughs> he takes that Claritin. <laughs> women I need is a shot of a pheromone that is only allergic to gay men. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh god, and there's oh there's a storyline too where they have to go to basically Game of Thrones equivalent of S Spain. Basically, it's just Spain, but they call it Dorne, but it's Spain. They might mm. as well not even hide it. But they go there, and the entire plot is like Jamie's there to rescue his and Cersei's daughter. Though of course they don't officially acknowledge it's Jamie's daughter because you know incest. And also, Oberyn Martell's kids are really pissed, and they want to kill the daughter. That Tyrant storyline exists because Oberyn Martell was a really popular character out of Season 4, who unfortunately did not survive Season 4. So they were like, oh, well, we'll just bring in his kids. And his kids are the absolute worst. <laughs> and their entire role in the plot is to kill off Jamie and Cersei's daughter to get her out of the story. Because they can't have her there because it's important that Cersei become queen. And she's probably higher in the succession lineage than Cersei is. Like, it's one of the most transparent cases I've ever seen of, we need to get to the finale now. Go, go, go. <laughs> we need that. It's reverse plot armor. Yeah. Except for the characters who need to get to the finale. They survive shit they shouldn't. Like, one of the great things about the first four seasons of Game of Thrones is, being a good guy did not automatically guarantee you the victory. People didn't just get away with shit because they were the good guy. Like, Ned Stark and Rob Stark both did some really stupid shit despite being good guys. Oberyn Martell did some really stupid shit despite being a good guy. And they all paid the price for it. But then in Game of Thrones, people are just making the same mistake. And it's like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, no big deal. Yeah. Like, Ned didn't pay any attention to politics. Well, he gets killed because he got out politic by people who were actually political. And then Jon Snow makes the exact same fucking mistake in uh, Season 5 where he decides to leave the Wall while he goes to visit the Wildlings. He leaves it under the control of notorious jackass Alistair Thorne, who immediately goes about the process of persecuting Jon Snow's friends. And, like, if this had happened in the first four seasons, John's would have, John would have came back to find his friends dead. But, no, this is season five, so fuck it, they're fine. <laughs> uh. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it, it start, it's starting. It, it's bad now, I know it's only going to get worse once we get to season eight. Like, oh, oh, God. And the first four seasons were so good. And hey, you know what? It's the Steam sales going on. I picked up Dragon's Dogma. Didn't get around to playing it. Picked up Doom 2. Got around to playing it. Yeah, it's Doom. It's good. And Is I, it 2? It's a, it's a 2. It's a tomb. Oh, man. There are, there are two, two dead bodies instead of one. Oh, no. God, I, I love the Doom guy's motivation throughout the classic Doom duology or trilogy, if you include 64, is that they killed his pet rabbit. Those fuckers. <laughs> ah. And I picked up two Total War games I didn't have, Total War Empire and Total War Medieval 2. I did not put any time into Empire yet because I wanted to go back to Medieval 2 because I did, in fact, pick up Medieval 2 at a previous date and thought that it was too jank. So I refunded it through Steam's wonderful refund policy for full cash back and all that. And I decided, you know what, I think I gave that game a little too hard of a time. I picked up the game again while it was on sale for six bucks. Yeah, I gave that game too hard of a time. 
It's a fucking yeah. good game. The... <clears throat> what was I going to say? One thing about the, uh, about the game. It's got some things that are better than the modern Total Wars, and it's got some things that are worse. A big part of Total War is managing your budget. And a big part of that is every unit has a certain amount of upkeep, a certain amount of money they must be paid every turn. In addition to the, um, the uh, direct lump sum that you got to pay to have them recruited in the first place. In the later Total Wars, you're, you have a little money counter either in the bottom right or in the top center of the screen. It just straight up tells you how much money you have in the bank right now and how much money you are uh, getting in terms of income. So the amount of money you're making sub minus the amount of money you're paying per turn. Total War Medieval 2 doesn't have that on screen. You have to you have to open up a little economic sheet to look at it. Oh no. Yeah. You get used to it, it just becomes muscle, muscle memory past a certain point, but it is an annoying pain in the ass. <laughs> I'd rather have it on the screen at all times, thank you very much. Yeah, but it does have something that the new, newer Total Wars don't, and that it actually includes the lump sum expenditures you have for this turn in the uh, change amount for each uh, turn. So where before, it's like, well, I bought a shit ton of buildings, and they were each like a thousand gold each, but I don't know how much that actually added up to, because I wasn't keeping track of that shit. So I don't know if I'm in the if I'm in the black or I'm in the red for this turn. Whereas Total War Medieval 2 actually includes that. So that's awesome. Another thing, Total War Warhammer and Total War Rome. I'm not sure about Shogun or Empire because I haven't put in that much time with them. Have a anti-snowballing mechanic. In Rome it's called Imperium and in Warhammer it's called Supply Line. In Imperium, it affects a variety of things. In Total War Rome, it affects a variety of things. In Total War Warhammer, it only affects one thing. The more armies you have, the more expensive every unit is. Which makes sense from a snowballing perspective, right? Because yeah. that's the chief thing that every strategy game has to deal with. Every, like, civilization type, right? Well, right. It, it results in the kind of situation where... You don't want to get more armies ever. You just want to get have two or three armies that are that have really good, really expensive units. Which is a bad thing to encourage cuz for a lot of factions that means you're just going to like I'll put it in perspective for the Skaven cuz that'd be the ones you guys would know. A late game an early game Skaven army, you're going to have a little bit of everything. It's going to be pretty nice and balanced. A late game Skaven army, your front line is going to be nothing but storm vermin. Late game for the Skaven, clan rats and Skaven slaves pretty much just don't exist. <laughs> yeah. Late, late game storm vermin, the freaking man catchers. Nothing but the man catchers. <laughs> man catchers actually aren't a unit in Total War Warhammer. Oh. Yeah. It, it's partially just because that would be very weird to work from a story perspective, uh, from a strategy perspective, I'd imagine. Yeah, you can just imagine, drag, drag units away, yeah. I mean, ima imagine <laughs> imagine if they had these catchers and they were like ninjas, so they could disappear and then just reappear on, on the other side of the, of the battlefield, and then if they succeed, if they succeed in um, capturing people, then they they become food. Yeah. Well, that, that actually is a Skaven mechanic, that for every battle you win, you pick up food. Skaven are the only uh, race in Warhammer that actually has a food mechanic. It's kind of weird that no other race has it, but I get that in the case of the Skaven, it's because the Skaven reproduce way too quickly, and for them, overpopulation is an actual problem. With all that said, yeah, Medieval 2 does not have that mechanic at all. Which means that Medieval 2, I, it's actually pretty reasonable to have, like, ten armies, each formed up of, like, only ten dudes, and some of the dudes are just mediocre or shitty guys, like, oh, just some peasants with pitchforks. Okay. Because you needed people to be in that part of the world. Regardless of the quality or the price. Whereas in Warhammer 2, it's like, well, I've got two ar I, I own half the world, and I have two armies. And they're all formed out of, like, the most elite stormtroopers possible. <laughs> At which point, like, 
it gets to be a problem of Total War works on, you know, you guys know that Total War works on the division of the campaign and battle maps and game modes, right? Yeah, right. Your campaign is a turn-based kind of risk-like game mode. Battle mode is more of a realistic, you know, medieval warfare simulator. And the problem with Total War Warhammer and all them is that they emphasize the latter way more than the former. And that's a big part of that. On the campaign map, it's obvious to say you want to have the tactical decision between choosing to have one really big army full of the craziest badass as possible, or having ten armies of just whatever losers. Like, you want to have strategic choice. But for Total War Warhammer, they want to focus more on not only prevent making the game more difficult, but also preventing snowballing. So they're just like, no, you only need two armies. Do all the work with two armies. Take over the world with two armies. <laughs> and that's been a thing that's kind of turned me off of Total War Warhammer for the last couple months. I'm really sad because for a good while I played nothing but Total War Warhammer. Like, you guys remember every episode of the podcast I'd be like, Oh, hey, I played Total War Warhammer this week. And that's, that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how For Honor past a certain point reached a, like where Addy, like you just couldn't not see the flaws, right? Yeah. I quit. I quit altogether a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever get bad enough that I'll uninstall the game. <laughs> I just started disliking the fighting system, and the fighting system was the only thing I liked in the game. So, I mean, I think you always had a strange understanding with For Honor, like because from the very beginning you were like, "Yeah, I don't want this to be a fighting game. I want this to be a Muso." And I was like, "It was never intended to be a Muso, Hattie. Why would you do that?" It it was sort of in the event to be intended to be a Muso because of the freaking minion killing animations, but then they removed that because people complained. Musos don't have minion killing animations. You do big combos that gather a hundred people in one combo. That's a Muso. But yeah, but but yeah, but for like half of the pe people, they don't actually have shit in their kids that that would work good in gathering people. So yeah. <laughs> Well, that goes back to the MOBA perspective of having laners and having characters who are 1v1s. But, yeah, For Honor is a case of, like, there are some games that try to be every genre and it somehow works. There, Then there are games like For Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, I popped in and I loved the fighting game aspect. I didn't think it worked as a MOBA. And, like, Addy's like, yeah, I love the Muso aspect. Fuck the rest of this game. So, yeah, weird. Video games are weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways. Right, back to Total War Medieval 2. That is generally pretty good. It's got some, it's got some oddities, that's for certain. Particularly the whole thing of to my knowledge, only the playable nations are present on the game map. All other space is occupied by the ambiguous rebel faction. Which becomes a problem. Because there are actually some pretty important countries that got left out. Like Norway and the Netherlands. <laughs> and pretty much any of the French kingdoms except for France itself. Or Wales. Or Ireland. They all have just been replaced with generic fucking... Whatever. Rebels. It's the chaos. It's the chaos. Yeah. It has already taken over. Ha. Ha. Well, ugh. And the, the crazy thing, the one last crazy thing I want to mention about Medieval 2 before we wrap this up. So it has, the Total Wars have many campaigns that will just focus on specific camp, specific conflicts, right? Yeah. So, Total War Medieval 2 has the most mini-campaigns. It's got one for the Americas, for the Crusades, for the British Isles, and for the Teutonic Order. Which I found out while reading, apparently the Teutonic Order is still running today? How? I think I've, I think I've heard of it, yes. <laughs> but they're a knightly order that's been running since the Crusades. How? Yes. Yes, yes, I don't, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, I actually don't remember. Whatever. Leave me, let's leave that thoughts in the bin. Like, I think 
I think they're now considered to be more of a religion thing, but there may also be an ethnic side to it. I don't even know. They are still going to date. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> what? didn't. It's so crazy. You didn't believe me when I said it, and you had to go look it up nope. yourself. <laughs> I went and looked it up real quick. I was like, that can't be right. No, they're still running. How? Like, there is a. This video game allows me to go back to 1200 and unite Eastern Europe while playing as them. And that's the theme of the campaign. And they're still running. And they apparently still hand out knighthoods. I don't imagine they ride around on horses in armor anymore, but still. That's the nuttiest shit, isn't it? <laughs> From what I can tell, now they're mostly just uh, an organization. Uh, they they run a museum and an, and an archi archives, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> also, there are there are a thousand people currently in, in the in the order. That, that's more than I. I'm not sure if that's more or less than I expected. Honestly, <laughs> I can't say. I want to say more than I want to say less. Like that is confounding. That is genuinely confusing. Like, like what? what they, you... <laughs> yeah. Well, you would think past a certain point they wouldn't stop calling it the Teutonic Order and they just call it like the German Missionary Association or some shit, right? I mean, technic technically, the Hungarian they they have, their, their Hungarian name is just the 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 German Knight Order. So yeah. Oh, by the way. By the way, one of the kingdoms that actually is selectable in Medieval 2 is Hungary. And yeah, you never pick them because they die in the first turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, thankfully, the game starts early enough that the Byzantine Empire exists, so they manage to not be the Ottomans' first targets, but they are the second targets. Yeah. The weird thing about this game, every other Total War game, you start with all the options. Not with this one. This one you only get to pick from England, France, Spain, Holy Roman Empire, and Venice at the beginning. And you have to unlock 20 countries. I've never seen a strategy game with unlockable fucking factions. It's weird. Who's that country? It's Pikachu. <laughs> the, the holy land of Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> The holy, the holy PK Empire. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I think we are definitely going to do an LP of that as soon as I unlock Hungary. Ain't that, ain't that wild to just have a video game where it's like you unlocked Hungary? Like, okay, <laughs> all, all, all five million people, huh? Okay, all five people located <laughs> directly in Hungary. Apparently, they're actually a decent faction, too, because you got, like, good uh, archer cavalry. And these old and in these games, archer cavalry fuck shit up. But it, what is this set? Uh, generally, the space between 1100 and 1600. So, from the beginning of Knights to the beginning of Gunpowder. Okay, that, that old cavalry is not, not, that not, not the top, but still the only thing that's <laughs> interesting about us. As far as I know. Another crazy thing about Hungary is that Hungary is one of the first factions to get the Halberd, which is good. Halberds are very good. Lawbringer. <laughs> e even better than Lawbringer. It's in the hands of peasants. The unit is genuinely called Transylvanian Peasants. That's the name of the unit. Ah. Uh -huh. Nice. <laughs> and since they're peasants, they're extra cheap. So you just get really cheap anti-cavalry armor-piercing units, which is awesome. So Hungary is actually a pretty interesting faction. And was were the Ottomans really big on cavalry? Uh, I don't know. They were really big on kidnapping or kids and then just freaking making teaching them to be Turkish, though. That I know. Well, there was the Janissaries. Yeah, I remember that. But I don't think the Janissaries show up until like the late medieval period, right? Yeah. Ah. Uh. But anyways, yeah, that's a good game, and I'm going to have to figure out how to unlock Hungary so we can play it. And one last thing I want to say about it. Have any of you guys you... ever seen... Yeah, Pink, pink Paul looks like, please help me. 
<laughs> go, go. Okay, y'all look, y'all look, y'all look hungry by play, play, playing a faction that that then got divided divided into into a quarter of its size by the other factions surrounding it. Ha! So I just want to mention the crazy mods of Total War King Morty, Medieval Two. Have you guys seen the mods? Nope. I have not. This game was apparently the peak of modding for Total War. So you've got mods for Lord of the Rings conversion, Game of Thrones, Elder Scrolls, Dragon Age, Warhammer of all things. That's a, <laughs> that's a little redundant now, I guess. And apparently the mods are all pretty quality. So, I might need to look into that at some point. Like, I've heard that the uh, the Lord of the Rings mod is actually one of the best mods ever developed for any video game, period. Like, it fully simulates not only the entire map and the military strategies of Tolkien's universe, but, like, the politics, too. Oh, man. So, yeah. Good things happening over here. Ah... All right, so <clears throat> I think we can call that a podcast. Put up a timestamp. Oh God, right, meme hour. <laughs> no, not not meme hour. I mean, we can we can do that, but <laughs> I don't have it open. All right, just shoot, just shoot. So we this is an, an announcement. This is our new new logo for the for the podcast. Yeah. Are those bubbles? No. Maybe, I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what is that texture? I don't know, dude. Addy? Bye. There we go. I can't find the OBS tab. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Later, folks. <laughs> This is the podcast <laughs> that never ends. It just goes on and on and on. Shut up! <laughs>